John Reeves. How's it going, guys? Today we are freaking live with an amazing guest, man, Rob from McDojo Life. I'm so excited to be actually talking to him. I've been a fan of his since at least going back two, three years now. Uh, his freaking YouTube page is amazing. His Instagram is amazing. Battlescar, babe, how you doing today? Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, anybody, I will definitely be like chatting in chat. If you guys have questions, we'll try to get them answered. And I know he's a really busy guy, so let's go in and bring him in right now. Thank you all so much. And uh, yeah, let's do this. Boom. Rob, how you doing today? Yeah. Yes. martial arts let's do it again yeah there you go i like it man i like it well nice brother so we uh man i i've been following your instagram your youtube page for now a good bit of time and like i i'm trying to remember i was looking back to see like which one was one of the first ones that i've seen uh but i wanted to get right into it like this is gonna be the hardest question i asked today but the iron egg technique your thoughts <laughs> Your thoughts uh, on the I, iron I egg? I do every morning. Uh, you know, I wake <laughs> up, you know, have breakfast. I, I get kicked in the dick like 15, 20 times. <laughs> and then I go about my day. I think everybody should practice the iron egg technique. I uh, think. <laughs> Does it so work, it's though? Like ridiculous, to be honest, this is ridiculous bullshit. Like, <laughs> the idea of martial arts, I would think, is self-preservation. The yes. goal would be, don't get hit. So, how about you teach me about that? Not like the old school fucking Beavis and Butthead, kick me in my jimmy. Like, no, I don't, I don't want you to kick me in my groin. And no. It's just, it's, I don't know. It's like, I, you know, when I was working as a bouncer, um, I did that for about two years. I was a door guy at a club called mm -hmm. Plush here in town. And while I was working the door, I fucking hated that job because at the time I was like 155 pounds soaking wet. You know, yeah. I was only doing the job because it just brought in income because teaching martial arts wasn't paying me a damn thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I worked this door at night so I could get up early, so I could train, so I could go teach martial arts, and then I'd be back at that door again. So yeah. I wasn't really sleeping, and the door job <laughs> made me cranky. But anyway, when you're, when you're at the door, you have to deal with a lot of things, and it's a very physically demanding job because when people get tossed out of the club, you don't oh, have yeah. time to talk with the other bouncers about why he's out. Mm -hmm. All you hear is he can't come back in, and that's all I need to know. I don't need to know why, because after they toss him, they always aggressively rush at the door. If yeah, dick or drunk, and then you know every <laughs> once in a while you might get chimed in the pills, or you might take a shot to the groin, or somebody might try to reach up and grab or whatever. And I can tell you, it does not feel good, but it's a hit or miss kind of thing, right? It's like yeah. some days you get hit, you drop to your knees in pain because <laughs> you know the five year old threw a ball across the room and chimed you. And sometimes mm -hmm. you get hit really hard in jujitsu, like somebody like goes to half guard and their knee like crams God, into yeah. the crotch, mm -hmm. and then you're like, "That wasn't so bad," you know. And so I don't know. That kind of stuff is ridiculous to me because why? Why would I spend my entire martial arts training <laughs> to learn one martial art, which is the kung fu iron body, by the way? Mm -hmm. um, why would I spend my entire time learning this iron body technique? For some shit that you know, I'm gonna yeah. try to avoid anyway. I'm gonna try not to get hit in the groin. Yeah, I'm gonna try to mm -hmm. avoid that. Um, Isn't one of the uh, they say like one of the best defense is a good offense type thing? I know that's mostly in uh, football. I guess they say that, yeah. but like you know, in that sense, you're that's just that's going a hundred percent on body armor and defense. You know, Dude, that's a solid. That's a solid <laughs> advice. Like you don't like. And that's like the old advice, like, just get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's a great idea. Like, you're watching two fighters hit each other in the face. Like, how come he isn't moving his head? Like, I'm pretty sure he's trying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, man, uh, so speaking of which, like, you, you talked a little bit about you were a bouncer first, but how did you really get started in MMA? And I knew you actually had a gym, or do you still currently have a gym now? Or No, I, I had a martial arts school for about four years. Mm -hmm. um, but I started, I was born with a cleft lip and palate, so I have scars on my face. Mm -hmm. um, and so growing up with that as a child and constantly going through surgeries, my last official surgery, I think, was when I was 16 years old. Oh, nice. um, and so I had surgeries all the time. They were mm -hmm. constant. I have what's called a bilateral, so... I have a much worse cleft palate than most people get. So 
So even statistically of me having a low chance of ever having it, I have the lower chance of even having a worse <laughs> one. So I won that genetic lottery. Yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah. You know, but as you're growing up and you're going through school, kids are always inquisitive. And mm -hmm. so, of course, that damages your self-esteem as a human being because you're constantly having to answer questions that other people aren't having to answer. And you start asking yourself. And so eventually that gets very grating and mm -hmm. it turns into a problem. And so you have yeah. to deal with bullies and things like that. And so I actually, one day it came to a head. I was in eighth grade. I was uh, 12 years old at the time. Um, I was able, I graduated at 17 from high school, which is pretty fucking cool. Oh, um, but, uh, you know, I was 12 and I got jumped outside of gym class. Uh, you know, when I got jumped, a kid stabbed me with pencils. I still had pencil lead in one of my fingers, like you can see. Um, it's still in there. Yeah. I got stabbed with pencils. They stepped on my head. Of course, I've had glasses forever. So glasses broke and cut my face up and shit. And so the, they beat me for five minutes. And the only reason God. I know it was five minutes was because they started beating me from the time the bell rang for class to be let out. Mm -hmm. And they didn't stop beating me until the next bell rang for the next class to be in, which was a five minute gap. Yeah. And the worst part about that whole thing, which is very eye opening over a long period of time for me of self reflection with shit like that is that two teachers stood there and watched the whole thing. Oh, my they God. They did not break it up. They did not stop it. They what? just stood there. And I, to, you know, again, I'm trying to process over the years what that could have been. And the, the mm -hmm. most logical thing that came to me was the fact that most fights were broken up by our school's officer. We had a couple officers on mm -hmm. site. And typically, it looked like they were the ones that usually broke up fights. Yeah. Um, and so I think what they were doing is they probably called for the officer to come. And so that just never happened. But I guess he was handling something else on the other mm -hmm. side of campus, you know, things like that. But at the end of the day, my best friend at that time, who at the time, you know, was really just an acquaintance, uh, but he came up and he was late for that class. Mm -hmm. And so he got there at the tail end. So after this, the, the bell rang, they all stopped beating me and they just kind of ran and scattered. Yeah. Um, and then he walked up and he was a hefty dude. He was a chunky mm -hmm. dude. Um, and then he picked me up. And he walked me to the nurse's office. Yeah. And as he was walking me to the nurse's office, he actually, he was in martial arts at the time. He handed me a card and it was for karate. And he said, you need this. Those were his Dude. exact words. Just, you need this. And I go, okay. And so at the <laughs> time when I went home, I had asked my mom, you know, to do every sport under the sun. I asked her to do baseball, football, anything that I could do to just have an outlet. And she would never let me do it. And it wasn't because she wanted to stifle me or anything, but it was mm -hmm. because she was worried that if I got hit in the face, I'd have to redo a lot of surgeries, which yeah. was very true. And so, but this, this time was different. I think she understood it was something I really wanted to do and I needed in my life. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the next month happened to be my birthday. And so she gave it to me. Uh, she bought a year's worth of a membership for my birthday. And so I had this year worth of martial arts classes and I just never stopped. And since then, uh, you know, I'm a third degree black belt in karate. I'm a third degree black belt in something called Lissa Jodo, which is a weapon system nobody's really heard of. It just means I do nunchucks, <laughs> which is very useless most of the time. Uh, I'm a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a 6 no amateur boxer, 4 and 2 amateur kickboxer. I was on an international kickboxing team for two years called Team Full Circle, where we traveled internationally and did sport martial arts and kickboxing tournaments. Um, Sage Northcutt was on that same team, actually, which Sage. is pretty cool. Um, Ross Levine, as well, if anybody knows, was on the team for a short time as well, but he's a gorgeous mm -hmm. boxer. Um, and so I've had the, this great opportunity to be in the martial arts world in a lot of different avenues. I ran a school for four years um, and then I got bought out because they liked the way I was running the school. And so they were like, how would you like to do that for us? That's so awesome. I got bought out by another school. And after that, um, you know, I around that time, I think I started like really looking into doing more consulting. And so I started giving out more advice and doing business consulting. So I've been doing martial arts business consulting now for about 10 years. Yeah. And uh, now I've been running the Gojo Life for nine or so years. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just love the martial arts. I really do. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it helps yeah. a lot of people. I think it can be a, a good thing. But it's very much taken advantage of by con men and con artists because there is no regulating body to the martial arts industry. Mm -hmm. Anyone, absolutely anyone, can open up a school, say they're the 37th degree black belt of their own style, and there you are. You are that thing now. Yeah, um, it's fucked up, but it's true. It's dangerous, man. <clears throat> I mean, we like uh, I do a lot of fight commentary, especially for like the local like Nashville fights and stuff like that. And there's like some schools that will come into amateur fights and have been training their students and they're like black belts at this point. And uh, they just get 
like mopped like with all due respect i guess but like it's just the teacher is not really teaching their students anything and they've got their confidence up here so whenever they actually get into an actual fight or an altercation it's just like night and day difference between what they're taught in the gym and what actually is happening that's which is super sad man because that's a you know i have rules for the page i don't just like call out things that i think are just funny because if i did that i would fucking i'd be posting like five six yeah. times a day but i have like specific rules that i have for the page and you know when it comes down to one of the rules is no touch knockouts but mm -hmm. with that is also mislabeling technique when you yeah. get somebody which is more common than people think if you go to a cardio kickboxing class when you're at the cardio mm -hmm. kickboxing class you're not going to learn self-defense <laughs> you're going yeah. to learn to punch well you might learn good technique if you have a good instructor so you don't hurt yourself you mm -hmm. know because you can you know if you're hitting the bag and wailing on it wrong you could tear things but, yeah you know, but if you call that self-defense that's a problem mm -hmm. if you call it cardio kickboxing that's not a problem because what you're doing is you're indoctrinating somebody into a mindset of what this is for mm -hmm. and so i see a lot of cardio kickboxing classes try to tout that it's also for self-defense just because you know how to jab cross a bag does not mean you're learning self-defense yes um, you know, and so I think that that kind of thing could be very toxic. And it, like you said, fighters going in with this false sense of confidence mm -hmm. is directly related to teaching somebody and mislabeling what they're doing as something it's truly not. Yeah. So, like, you know, you talked about your background with MMA, which, by the way, is like a very um, relatable story that I think a lot more people can relate to than might even can care to mention you know like for me for instance growing up dude i had like psoriasis and like dry skin and stuff I'm, like the only kid in school that has this and i felt like just the most like gilded person in a sense you know i'm like ah oh, like just so i don't know but like having those insecurities i feel like kind of like made you in some sense like a lot of ways like the person that you are now like dude you're a very humble person before you got on the podcast you said you know you you make it a point to uh reach out and answer any of your fans that send you messages like this and then also you made it a point to get on any podcasts and shows that you can so i think that's you know it speaks volumes man but do you think that that outlook and the way that you have an appreciation for martial arts helped you create the dojo mick dojo life in a sense i don't know maybe um you know i i i don't i have a hard time justifying some things over a long period of time i guess it's a part of living is mm -hmm. that you're trying to figure out the why <laughs> like, yeah yeah <laughs> why am i on this Having planet <laughs> why is the planet you know and it's, it's, you have all these high thoughts all the time sometimes you know and so one of mm -hmm. those is like how did i kind of fall into place like well it's the butterfly effect like let's yeah. imagine that, that i never got jumped that day i probably would have never joined martial arts ever mm -hmm. you know that would have completely changed what i do um so i am in a sense grateful for those things and i wouldn't i wouldn't go back and change them um, you know, maybe I would go back and give myself better advice on how to handle them emotionally and mm -hmm. maybe uh, how to handle <clears throat> other people and how to handle criticism better. Um, but that's something that comes with time. Yeah. The only way you're going to be good at anything is you got to fuck that thing up a lot. If you want to <laughs> yes. be good at life, fuck up life. Like really fuck yourself up. Like you want to learn how to be good at directions, go get lost. You really want to learn how to be good at fighting, well, go lose a couple fights. Like, yes, man. What happens is, is like when you have these trials and tribulations that we all do, so I'm not mm. special in that. We all have bullshit. We all have baggage. We all have things that we have done that we regret. And we all have things that we've done that we wish we would have done. You know, oh, man, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have talked to this person. I wish I would have done that. You can't live that way, man. You, yeah. You know, it, I don't know how I got here. I just know that I did. And I'm grateful that I was able to – I'm able to do the thing that I truly love. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to have people who respect what I do and enjoy what I do. Um, obviously the bigger the spotlight, the more you're going to be able to see the flaw. So you always have to deal with, you know, people who were dicks or assholes, but yeah, yeah it's going to happen anyway. So why not shine without, with not worrying about what the fuck they have to say? Like, fuck them. Like they can kiss both my asses. <laughs> for real. The left and the right. <laughs> well, I will say it speaks volumes for your character, man. Cause I mean, I, like I, I tell that to people all the time, like I, my life is kind of like just trial and error. And I learn a lot from the failures that I have. And then I just keep going, you know, but like, a lot of people will have that failure or have a huge situation like that and use that as an excuse to be like a shitty person or like give up on whatever their dreams were, you know, like as soon as they face some adversity. And I think that even goes hand in hand with MMA, like actual martial arts. You're going to face a lot of I mean, you're not going to be able to be an actual black belt in jujitsu without getting your ass kicked a lot and rolling like you're going to lose a lot of altercation. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. 
And I think being, I think the, the most important thing about martial arts is it's the most honest moment you're going to have with yourself and another human being mm -hmm. ever. Um, if you didn't put in the time, didn't put in the work, didn't put in the effort, you will simply lose to the guy who did put in the time, the effort. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are sneaky, you'll be sneaking when you fight a human being. If you're <laughs> yeah. locked in a cage, a ring, on the mat, whatever your competition may be, when you and another human being are going at it, that is the most honest moment you'll ever have with another human being. Yeah. There, there's no, we're not having a conversation with words. We're not going to sit here and talk to each other that much, if at all. Mm -hmm. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing each other what we what we prepared for mm -hmm. and how that how prepared you are and what you're capable of doing is all going to shine right there. And you know, people always wonder, like, why do fighters hug after they just got done beating each other? It's because they had a moment that yeah. you will never understand if you've never had that moment with another person, mm -hmm. which is we both are here. We might not have really known each other. Some do, some don't. But we might not have known each other up to this moment. But it wouldn't have mattered who showed up at that point. Because once the bell rings, we both have a very specific mission. I have to hurt you or you're going to hurt me. Yeah. You have to hurt me. And I respect that, but I can't let you do it. And then when it's over, like all the adrenaline's gone, the eight-week training camp that you did, you know you're going to be able to get your beer, your shot of liquor, you know you're going to be able to hang out with your homies. But all that sacrifice that you made up to that point was so you can have a mo moment of honesty with mm -hmm. yourself and another thing. And so what I think is important in the martial arts industry is that we preserve that from bullshit and con artists who want to make it something that it's not. They mm -hmm. want you to believe a lie when all martial arts is is about honesty and self-discovery. And so the more you let these fucking assholes come in and keep telling lies to students, the more diluted the reality of the truth is going to be and the less you're actually going to get it. You're not going to get the real full effect of martial arts, which is 100% honesty in those small moments. Yeah, and that's awesome. Well, uh, so with McDojo Life, do you have a point where like the starting for you where it was just like, all right, this is a real thing. This is something that I can actually do for a living and like this is this is taking off. Was there like a post that you made or like a thing that well, had happened? There was a couple things that <clears throat> happened. Like I wouldn't say – like you get milestones, right? And I didn't mm – -hmm. when I first did it, I was doing it as a hobby. So I didn't set milestones or goals. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to. I was just doing it because it was fun. Yeah. I was like – like, nobody knows that guy's a fucking pedophile? Nobody? All right, fuck it. I'll tell people this guy is this guy who molested the kid. Here's the entire story. Here's where you can see that. Yeah. And then just kind of snowballed over the years. And then um, I guess a couple defining moments. Um, obviously, you know, people are going to talk about the fact that Rogan has talked about it on his show several times. Mm -hmm. It's something that a lot of people go to. Um, that, that was very cool. And it definitely escalated what I was doing. Like, yeah. it was – that was cool. Just simply to be recognized by a peer – Mm -hmm. um, somebody who you look up to and respect the fact that I respect Ro Joe Rogan more because of the fact that I know more about him now. Yeah. Um, at first he was just some commentator, but then, you know, after a long period of time, you see what he's done for other people. You realize mm -hmm. this is a good dude. Yeah. You know, he's done a lot for other people without <laughs> asking anything. And he's done a lot for me without asking a damn thing in return. That's so and cool. I have nothing but respect for that. But you know, that's something that everyone knows about. One of the defining moments, I think, which really turned this into like, let's let's take a go at this, mm -hmm. was I did a, um, a set up a, a sparring match between a female MMA fighter and an internet troll. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Chris. that was probably the first like real like, hey, you got something here because it wind up being like one of the number one threads on Reddit, like mm -hmm. it was blowing up. There were articles written about it. In oh, nice. just like I don't understand. <laughs> um, you know, I was getting called by did news reports on it. Like mm -hmm. people would like call me, hey, we'd like to interview you and shit. That was cool. Um, and I learned a lot, uh, especially dealing with state athletic commissions because they really fucking hate that shit. So, was was so that bad. like a commission fight and everything as well no, too? I'm... No, no, no. Well, it, let's just <laughs> legally this was a sparring match. Yeah, there um, you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, but. You know, there, there was a lot of bullshit that went into it, but at the mm. end of the day, that was like this thing where I was like, you know what? This guy is talking shit to me personally mm -hmm. about teaching females self-defense. And he was like, there was no way that a female would ever beat a man no matter how much training she had. Yeah. 99% um, of the time, a male's going to beat a chick. Mm -hmm. And basically what he was saying was training means nothing in a fight. Yeah. And I don't agree with that. I, I fundamentally do not agree. Yeah. Training means everything and anything that you do. That's mm -hmm. like saying, okay, the, the dude's a better mechanic. 
okay, well, depends. Like, what did he learn? Like, does he <laughs> yeah. know what he's doing? Like, just because he's a, he's a dude, you yes, you could say statistically there's probably more male mechanics than female mechanics. Mm. But that doesn't mean that a female can't learn that same fucking job. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that a male or a female is better than each other. I don't honestly give a fuck. I'm not here to talk about, like, transgender bullshit. Don't care about any of that shit. What I cared mm-hmm. about was specifically him fundamentally saying that technique meant nothing. And I was yeah. like, fuck that. And I was like, I had sparred other chicks before that had beat my ass wholesale. They had ripped me like a, a fucking two-bedroom, three-bathroom, uh, double-wide asshole. Like, <laughs> you know? And then yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, you're, you're, you're looking at this and you're going, fuck, like that person really put in the time and the effort. I did mm-hmm. not. That's all there is to it. And you know, maybe I might have advantages chemically and biologically, but did I put in the work? Yeah, uh, for sure. If I didn't, that person's still whooping your ass, especially mm-hmm. like high, high level athletes. Yeah. So I'm looking at him and I'm going, well, you're, you're talking all this shit about because he didn't know I ran McDojo life. Mm-hmm. So he's talking all this shit because I was teaching martial arts at the time to clients. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I, and I wrote him a message. I was like, hey, man, maybe you're joking and that's cool, but you have to understand this is my job and I don't appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And he doubles down. He goes, you should be fucking ashamed of yourself. Oh, my God. And I was like, you know what? Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? I'll tell you what. I'll put up $2,000 of my own money um, <laughs> to any female who's willing to come and spar you. I'll pay for everything. I'll pay for their flight. I'll pay for their hotel. I'll pay for the food. And I'll pay them to show up, not to, to spar, by the way, because yeah. that would be illegal. Um, yeah. But I, I paid them to show up. And so I wound up finally getting a fighter who put it on his ass, and we filmed it, and we put it on YouTube. The irony, which is what kills me, right, is perception. Everybody's mm-hmm. all about perception. When we first arrived in Orlando, which is where we were originally going to host it, the, the, the day of the owner – the owner's wife runs in and is like, you can't do this here. You have to. Leave. Oh God. And I was like, like, and we're talking like an hour before this is supposed to go down. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, I'm leaving. Like, you can tell him to come in here and we could talk about why, but if you don't tell me why I'm not yeah. going to sit here. Like, people had really like, by that time it had blown up. Oh God. Like put in donations to give like to the person who was fighting and all that stuff. Right. It was a big deal by this time. <laughs> I was like, no fucking way. I'm just leaving. You know, that day I got hit with a hard Facebook strike. Oh, like, God. Really so yeah. like, I had to like, open up another page to be able to go into the group page to be able to interact and tell people what was going on. I could still live stream and all that. Yeah. And then the, the State Athletic Commission to put a kibosh on it, the police had showed up and said if they actually wind up sparring. Oh, my God. Um, that you're going to have to answer for that because this will technically be illegal. And then you're going to have to go to jail and your lawyer will have to work it out. And I was like, well, that's not going to help. <laughs> so we had to go live. We yeah. went live in front of a fuckload of people. Like, I think at that point, there was over 100,000 people watching. Jeez, I man. Like, I have to tell all of these people <laughs> that this isn't going to happen. Of course, getting there was a fucking huddle, you know? Like, every two seconds, something was wrong or something was misplaced. I went through two fighters before I was able to get the third to actually commit. Yeah. You know, he, the dude, people like, oh, he'll, he's never going to show up because, you know, he's just the internet troll. I was like, no, I know this dude. He will show up. And he did. And then eventually we wind up making it happen anyway. The irony is that after all the bullshit I had to go through to make these guys fight, I had to set it up in a different state because the State Athletic Commission wasn't yeah. going to fly. And so we went to a different state. Never going to tell you guys where that fucking was. <laughs> I went to a different state. Once we got there, I had to fly with him. Oh, God. And so we're flying, and he's right next to me, and he's just fucking this gabbing. Was, this was pre-fight? Pre fight yeah. on the okay, okay, yeah. So we're flying <laughs> to the new, new location. Oh, god, to happen. and this motherfucker's just talking to my ear, blah blah blah. And I was like, okay, whatever, I just slap me <laughs> in the fucking face, but I can't because I need you to fight. And so then by the time we actually get there, um, we're on the Uber ride, we got an Uber and we're driving to the thing. And then he's like, you know what, I don't think I'm gonna punch her. He goes, I don't think I think that'll make me look bad. And in my head, I'm like, you already said a lot of bullshit. That yeah. You look bad. <laughs> um, so you might as well win because if you don't, she's going to make you embarrassed, too. That's and a bad. Like, he's like describing how he's not going to punch her, even though it's MMA rules. Oh my he's God. Describing how he doesn't want to punch her because he doesn't want to look bad in the, the view of the world. Mm-hmm. And that he wanted to prove that jujitsu was also bullshit by just out strengthening her, like being stronger than her. Oh, my God. And in my head, I'm like. And then I found out later, of course, he was training with a buddy in jiu-jitsu to prepare for it. So Oh, there awesome. you go. Yeah, untrained, and huh? I talked to her, and when I get there, you know, I pull her off to the side, and I'm like, hey, how do you feel? Are you, are you prepared for this? Are you good to go? And all that good stuff. And she's yeah. like, you know what? I, I think I'm just going to shoot in and take him down. I think if I punch him, 
then it'll be an exchange of hands, and then mm-hmm. he might have a puncher's chance. Mm-hmm. And so going into the fight, then, as someone who was promoting the fight, I was yeah. like, fuck, it's going to look like a grappling match. Mm-hmm. But hearing it, I was like, she's going to beat his ass because he <laughs> doesn't want to throw punches. So yeah. she does. She takes him down. They, they want, she slips right off the bat, so he gets real fucking lucky. Mm-hmm. Tries to dive on a rear naked choke. He gasses his arms out like a day mm-hmm. one amateur. And then she winds up getting the better of him, and he taps to side control. He wasn't even in a submission. He tapped a cardio. Mm-hmm. He's like, I can't breathe. Turn the cameras off. I was like, <laughs> you know I'm not going to let you stop like that, right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to let you. Like, it's going to be a submission or someone's getting hurt, but mm-hmm. I'm not letting you stop because you can't breathe. I'm like, you're being a bitch. Like, I'm going to throw up. I was like, then you fucking throw up. You come back, you rally, and you go back in it again. Yeah. Like, this isn't like one of those shits that you get to like. There's no game game. I don't see any fucking judges. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like this is a sparring match that you agreed to. Y'all are sparring. Now fucking finish it. So he finally does. And oh, he tries God. to like Garambi really like tries like Garambi roll. He tries to like Baron mm-hmm. Bolo. Um, Weird. And he's never done it a day in his fucking yeah. life. So if you video, he just falls on the floor. And she winds up arm barring him. And, uh, you know, after I put that out and, you know, people still share that shit today and it's on our YouTube channel. But that was like the I think the moment where I was like, you know, I had to go through a lot of bullshit to make this actually happen. Yeah. Dealing with like female activist groups who oh thought my God. on their side. And, you know, there was a you know, there was these, uh, uh, sex, uh, sexist groups that were like, oh, you're putting this together to prove that men can beat women. Thank you. And I was like. I'm not here for any yeah. of you yeah. like, I'm not on any of your sides. I was like, I'm doing a science experiment. Mm-hmm. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But yeah. we're going to prove it. And so that was probably one of the bigger moments. You know, if anybody actually, like, if any of those people watched the video, there's like a whole introduction where you're interviewing the girl fighter and she's like, hey, this is not for political stuff. I just wanted exactly. to prove a point. And like, so, so many people would just read the headlines and don't actually consume the context, you know? It but. fucking kills me because, like, she, <laughs> you know, like, she, she's, uh, first of all, she's a legend. Tara La Rosa's been mm. doing MMA for a very long time. She's one oh, of the yeah. women that helped pave the way. Mm. And she's retired. She didn't even train for the fight. <laughs> That's how little she thought of this man and still beat him, even when she wasn't, she was half assing it. Yeah. Like, her boyfriend at the time was like, complaining about it like before the fight i don't want you to do this but i support your decision and he's a cool dude don't get yeah. wrong i get it you know um, and i probably wasn't his favorite person in the world for orchestrating and putting it all yeah. together but at the end of the day, you know like she proved a point yeah that someone who was trained and not a professional because at the time she was mm-hmm. not a professional she was been retired <clears throat> and versus the person who was untrained skill matters yes so that was something that was extremely important because if skill doesn't matter why do we train any martial art at all that's very it's yeah the luck of the draw mm-hmm. and so i don't believe that and so luckily she helped prove the point yeah you know but sometimes you got to put your money where your mouth is you know yeah. if you really want change and you really want to affect people's mentalities scientific way is the best way to do it take mm-hmm. your ego out of the shit i have my own opinions they have their own opinions let's find out yeah and then when you do then you get the uh, the lucky advantage of saying, I fucking told you so. <laughs> Make your face. Make your <laughs> yes. And within so many people, so many people were there to experience the freaking I told you so moment. <laughs> it's got to be that. Uh, it's got to be beautiful. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, man, uh, so you do the uh, McDojo breakdowns. And I'd imagine that what you just, what we just talked about is probably one of like the, uh, like a bigger moment in the youtube career where you can look back at it and just be like that was freaking awesome but do you have a mcdojo breakdown uh that it just still sticks with you like is there one specific one that i mean they all have their own things man like i think what people don't really realize is how much time effort and energy really goes into really doing these breakdowns mm-hmm. because i'm not just analyzing the technique which is i think what people assume but mm-hmm. the mcdojo breakdown was like the best way i could think of conveying what i was trying to do yeah so i do these deep dives and if anybody ever gets a chance to watch i definitely suggest it but i really go into a lot of the more crazy shit that these people do then there's one um where the instructor this was actually just the like last month and the month before the instructor, still an instructor today, mm-hmm. still has devout followers. It's called the Kala system, and his name is Edon Abelnik. Oh my god! And he shot a student. Oh yeah, I saw this. Yeah. In the stomach. 
Now, how did he do this, you might ask? Because he's been practicing with loaded firearms. Mm -hmm. Not only did he practice loaded firearms and shot a student, he also practiced with loaded firearms after shooting the student. So he never learned his lesson. <laughs> no. He also got kicked off of a firing ranges because of this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm doing a part two to that, by the way. Okay. Um, so I interviewed the guy who was the owner of the fire gun range who had to kick him off for doing illegal use of firearms. He ripped people off by getting payments for seminars overseas up front and then never showing up and never giving <laughs> refunds and refusing to give refunds, which, by the way, constitute as fraud. Um, and then on top of that, the guy thinks that he can do no wrong, but he'll send like this very like devout group of people online to just attack you. Yeah. And uh, it's really funny because I my, the one question I would always ask them is, well, what did I say that was incorrect? <laughs> You know, like yeah. you're mad. I get it. You have every right to be mad. I like this is your religion. Like this is your preacher. This is your cult. Yeah. And I am the white blood cell attacking it, trying <laughs> to say this is toxic, and you're defending it because you're the virus and you're mm -hmm. a part of it, and you've been taken advantage of by a very smooth con man. I never blame the follower. Mm -hmm. You you can't. They're a victim of a good con man. Yeah. What I do blame is I blame the instructor. And so when you look at all this evidence, I say, hey. What did I say that was wrong? Mm -hmm. And there's a reason I have never been sued is because I don't say bullshit as fact. That isn't fact. Yeah. And so everything that had he had done, the ripping of the people off, the getting kicked off the gun range, the lying about his resume on his website, which mm -hmm. he always has an excuse. He was like, well, you know, I didn't build the website. It's like, well, where did they get the information from? They just decided to give you this military <laughs> background that doesn't exist. Yeah. No, that's not what programmers do. Uh, web designers don't do that shit. You give yeah. it to them and they might type it. Um, and then, you know, so all this evidence and I just say, what did I say that was incorrect? Yeah. And they're like, well, it's not that you said anything that was incorrect. It's that the system is good. Who gives a fuck? I don't <laughs> care. There was a guy named David Arnbeck who molested a 15 year old girl in his mm -hmm. home, took a plea deal and is still has three martial arts school today, schools today. That's and so still fucked up, man. Around. He's still allowed around children. His martial arts system, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, is effective. Why do I give a fuck? Yeah. I don't because yeah. that's the forest for the trees. Yeah. All you're looking at is can this guy beat me up, go to any prison in the United States, and there will be somebody who may not have even ever trained martial arts who can beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Does that mean that we should respect them, listen to them, look up to them, <clears> follow <throat> their instructions, follow their guidelines? Trust them with our children. Trust mm -hmm. them with our safety. Fuck no. And I'm sure he has like a like a freaking uh, youth youth classes and stuff there as well too in his schools. Exactly. That's fucking horrible, so man. Like, when you when you see shit like this, like in all the uh, the breakdowns and stuff, that's a drop in the bucket. That's yeah. Just two stories. That's right so there. fucked like, up, man. What about the dude who was with the Bujin Khan? He wind up uh, he <laughs> got fired from the DEA because he convinced two women to let him sexually heal them because of his his religion. Yeah. He invented, and then he raped these two women. He was fired from the DEA, also for borrowing firearms, which is technically stealing firearms that he shouldn't have had. Yeah. And then he winds up hitting, like doing the craziest techniques, but the organization is aware of all of the things that he's done. Mm -hmm. Doesn't care. Still let him teach. And I don't— so it's like, it never ends. Never ends. I could probably name off every breakdown I've ever done because I like to study and know who these people are. Mm -hmm. So if I ever have these moments where I go live and someone questions me about them, I could give them fact based. Yeah. You know, I could say this is what happened. This is when it happened. This is how it happened. Yeah. And I mean, like, are there things like have you ever been able to actually get somebody like that out of teaching? Like, have, is there yeah. been a so there have been yeah, successes sure. in that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I my first death threat was because of that. God, uh, major death threat. I've yeah. had death threats in there, but my first major death threat was because of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started, I started on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, which that Facebook page got removed. I had like 110,000 followers. Oh, God. On the account. Yeah, Ouch. I just restarted it. So I have like 3,000 followers or something like that on our Go Facebook. Go follow him on Facebook, people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm like, I, I wound up getting a, hearing a story about a, mm -hmm. a martial arts instructor who was a pedophile. Somebody said, hey, dude, this guy's a pedophile. You should probably call him out. Mm -hmm. I did the research and found out that he was. And he changed his name and was going under a different alias in a different town yeah. and had opened up a school. So for some reason, <sighs> shit slipped through. I don't know how he did it, but he was able to get away with still being around children. So mm -hmm. I made a, you know, a write-up because back then I used to do long-form essays on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I, I typed it out and explained everything, added all the links and People really rallied behind that and started going to his business, 
Yeah. Um, and people are going to say this is cancel culture, but if you don't want to cancel a fucking pedophile, then I don't agree. With I, you. Yeah, that's justified um, cancel culture. That's yeah, like so. They did. They they canceled his ass. They went on Good. and they gave him one star reviews. They started adding links into all the comments. You know, mm -hmm. they started adding the links in their reviews, which was very important. Good. Yeah. So much harder to get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, and really stating like, look, this dude molested children, still around kids. Yeah. Uh, it was probably like a month later um, that he just disappeared. Like I never heard anything again. Yeah. Um, look back, you know, and check in on follow up, and his school was gone. It was no longer showed up as open. So I was yeah. like, all right, maybe he's closed. Good. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, no real justice, but maybe that's something better that he doesn't be around kids. Maybe that. Yeah, helps yeah. Did not get molested. Mm -hmm. Feel good about yourself, right? Well, years go by. We're talking two, three, maybe even four years. And I'm sitting down, and all of a sudden, uh, I get a message on Facebook. I'm going through. Like I said, I answer every direct message. Mm -hmm. So I get a message, and somebody was like, hey, didn't you do a story about this guy like years ago? Oh, and God. they show me a picture, and he had opened up another martial arts school overseas. Jesus, and so I was man. Like, and it was in London, which was incredible enough because this is where the death threat comes in. But I, I wind up doing the exact same thing. I'm like, yeah. this motherfucking guy. <laughs> like – what the, what kind of balls does this guy have? It's like, For real. Right, fuck it, and I put him on blast again. Yeah. They do the same thing, even bigger this time, because I have a much bigger following by that time, and they fucking destroy that man. Hell yeah. Done. That school winds up closing again. And so I think it was like a year later after that. I wind up getting hired for a seminar. Somebody brought me over there. They were like, hey, you know, we'd like you to teach us the nunchuck thing you do. Mm -hmm. I was like, cool. <laughs> I get a trip to London, and you're going to pay me? Yeah. Like, yeah. I wind up going, had a great time, and I was there for two weeks. And at the end of the two weeks, um, they had a tournament. It was a Taekwondo school. Um, and so they were like, hey, would you go to this Taekwondo tournament and help us support the team? I was like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You guys fly me out. Y'all been nothing but cool. You got my support 100%. Yeah. I wind up going to the tournament. This is a big tournament, too. Um, there's there's a couple thousand people in there. You know, all these different mats are going, and it's like a real good energy in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting um, there. Nobody was competing at the time. So I was like, you know what? I'll check my messages. So I just go through and answer as many as I can in my downtime. Mm -hmm. And I get a message from somebody who clearly just opened a profile. Okay. They had no posts. Yeah. They had nobody following them, and they followed no one. And all they wrote me was what I was wearing. And so ah. I was – that was weird. Because yeah. I had a room full of thousands of people, and I was like, "Dude, like that's creepy." And, but <laughs> oh my god! It's happened before where people are shy and they don't want to come talk for some reason. Yeah. Like, no, you just don't talk. We should chit. Um, and so I wrote a message like, "Hey, man, uh, you don't have to be shy. You're more than welcome to come over, and we can we can chit chat and talk about whatever you want." And then I found out what they were doing. They started describing the school that I had gotten shut down, and they were talking about how I lied and I made this up and all that good stuff. Now, granted, I don't know who's on the other line, but from the way the conversation was going, it's yeah. like a student who respected this guy and oh, you know, still believed his innocence and shit, even though there's like yeah. proof. Mm -hmm. Reason, again, I didn't get sued. And so he winds up telling me, and now granted, I took this with a grain of salt, but still mm -hmm. scary, is when there's a guy in a room and they're telling you that they're going to shoot you when you leave. Now, granted, it's oh London. Oh, my God. So that's, the chances of that actually being true are, like, slim to none, right? The guy yeah. probably didn't have a fucking gun. Gun rules and but stuff. But if he did, or if he decided he was going to try to stab me, or if he decided he was going to throw, you know, acid or whatever, whatever he wanted to do to me, he could have. Because there's yeah. no way for me to know. Mm -hmm. So I go up to the police officers there on site. They had hired some off-duty police officers. And when I get there, I'm like, hey, man, like, this happened and they were like in all honesty there's not really much we could do but mm -hmm. what we can do is we can walk you out when it comes time to close let yeah. us know when you're ready to go towards the end and we'll walk out with you to your car mm -hmm. now nothing ever happened which was good um but it definitely made me a little bit more on my toes of the fact that all i do is call out martial arts cults yeah and just because i'm calling out the leader does not mean there will not be fallout with the followers there are way more followers than there are leaders and i don't know what they look like Mm -hmm. All that good stuff. And so, you know, it kept me on my toes. You know, I got um, in my backpack. Um, this is funny enough. Um, <laughs> and my, I had a company um, give me like a body armor. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's an insert that goes into my actual. Dude. Yeah, it's a premier body armor. So they actually sent me one, gave me one. So that I is my slick. Kevlar, my backpack. So yes. I always have a backpack with me um, wherever I go. And so that has, you know, just in case. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I'm in Florida, so, you know, we're a concealed carry right state. Right to carry. So yeah. I, I got my, I, 
Um, and you know, like at the end of the day, I'm a little more heightened when it mm-hmm. comes to it. I'm not paranoid, but I'm damn sure prepared because you never know. But yeah. yeah, that, you know, so that's an example of a school getting shut down. You know, there was one also in South Africa, um, found out that over, like it was over the course of like 25 to 30 years, he had mm-hmm. lied to his students that he was promoting them in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu mm-hmm. when he never was promoted in Jiu Jitsu at all himself. <laughs> Um, and so they didn't find out until they were in their thirties. Oh my God. That's how much they respected this man. Some of those kids, had, some of them had been with him since they were five years old. Oh my God. And then they, he sent out this nasty, like four page email mm-hmm. of just like how they were losers and how they weren't good enough and how they were hyenas and jackals. And he called them almost every name under the sun. He said that they yeah. were going to demote them. He was going to take away their black belt rank because of some disagreement. It's like, First of all, wow. you couldn't have given it to them to begin with. Yeah. You wasted 30 years of their life. Now, they all respected him, but they mm-hmm. also thought that what he did was bullshit and he should be called out for it. Yeah. And so I did, and that school is closed. Um, you know, and then, you know, I get messages all the time from people who were say that they appreciate that they were able to see their style or their art or their instructor for who they really were mm-hmm. after seeing one of the videos, and that wasn't what they wanted to be associated with and stuff like that. So it makes an impact or I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like you get more of those like favorable uh, messages and comments uh, about people that are like appreciative of you kind of getting them out of the bullshit that they were in? Yeah, for sure. I think, but that's, that's the internet too. Like I think online it's so much easier for us to focus on the negative. Mm-hmm. Like, man, this guy said this and I'm going to get into this argument. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Mm-hmm. Like I always say the same thing to almost everybody. I'll engage for like maybe one or two comments. Mm-hmm. If it seems like something that we can discuss as adults, but after that, like if they're if I can see that they just want to argue, I don't really like to engage in that. Yeah. So I'll just let them know, hey man, if you want, you can join me live and we'll talk about it. That one's and awesome. I'll stop almost anything I'm doing <laughs> to have a conversation. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll go live right now and we can talk. Now, ninety percent of the time, they never do because they're mm-hmm. trying to troll. But at least that saves my time. Yeah. Like, you want to talk live? No. All right. Bye. Move on. I'm Dude. Going on my day. Yes. That is such a good way to deal with it, man. Like recently, like, I mean, I, you can have like a hundred comments and one negative one and you're just like, oh, that motherfucker. Why did that dude have to say that? I think that has to do with our ego too, though. Mm -hmm. Like uh, imagine you're telling a joke. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, we've all had that moment where like, oh, I got a joke or I said something and everybody laughed. Like most people at least have that moment once where it feels real good to get that laugh. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're telling a joke and you have everyone's attention, and you're in the middle of telling the joke and you're about to get to the punchline and you focus on the one guy who's not paying you attention, it'll fuck up your joke. Oh, yeah. If you focus on the one guy who's not laughing, it'll fuck up your day. Mm-hmm. And so, like, rather than focusing on the one guy, let's say there's 15 people there and the one person's not laughing. Well, what that's your, that says a lot about who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. Are you looking at the one guy not laughing or the 15 other people who are? That's a really good way to look at it. Where where is your energy going? Your energy should be going to the people who support and give a damn or at Mm. least are engaged, not the people who don't. They're never going to like you. They weren't going to like you, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. In the age of the internet, you meet more people, so of course you're going to run into more people that just simply don't agree with you, don't like you. They themselves have issues in life, Mm -hmm. and so this is their therapy, which I think a lot of people use the internet for. This is what stops them from shooting up their building. Yeah. The fact that they can go online, have this troll account, get out all their rage and their venom, and that's why I love the block button. Yeah. People think nowadays that getting blocked is a victory. Mm-hmm. The people who get blocked and think that's a victory are pieces of shit human beings. <laughs> yes, yes, 100%. They are. Like, I just is mm-hmm. what it is. I'm not going to concern myself with, oh, my God, I can't block this guy because he wins. No, that's not him winning. Yeah. He's going to filibuster, he or she, by the way. But if they're going to filibuster – to the point where they're just arguing with you to keep you on the line, mm-hmm. just hang up. Yes. You don't need to talk to them. You don't need to justify yourself to anybody. You don't need to engage with anybody that you don't want to engage with. And if a person can't have a rational conversation and you both just disagree and that's okay, that person has a problem. Yeah. Like, and that seems like where most God. people are nowadays it's... is they want to argue rather than just being okay with having a different opinion. It's okay to have a different opinion. We don't need to argue. Like, mm-hmm. all right, cool. You like blue, I like red. All right, cool, that's it. All right, you want a beer? Like, I got you. Well, <laughs> yeah. I might agree on 99% of things. And that's like that weird culture that we're in right mm-hmm. now is where people 
people will love you to death. Like they'll be all for everything you do. And then randomly you'll get a message. I've been following you from, since the beginning. And you said and this I'm one done. thing. This <laughs> so let me get this straight. I said one thing, one time. And you respected the fact that I called out pedophiles. You respected the fact that I called out frauds and con men, and I helped these people. You liked all that. <laughs> yeah. But I said, one thing you disagree with, and you were willing to say, well, fuck all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, you have people that I don't think understand the gravity of these type of decisions and how that really affects them in their day-to-day -day life. I totally agree. When I grew up, you know, as a kid, we grew up without the internet first, and then eventually the internet became a thing. So mm -hmm. we learned social cues and how to talk to people. Kids nowadays do not grow up that way. They grow up immediately online first. So a lot mm -hmm. of their communication skills are learned via the internet. And so when you see people spitting venom, mm -hmm. they automatically think that's okay to do. When you see people going, oh, well, I can say this to this person because they're never going to come find me. They think that's okay to do. Yeah. And then that boils over into their actual communication skills mm -hmm. in real life. And people will say and do and act in the most fucked up, deranged ways because – they weren't born in a time where communication was flourishing. And yeah. People were, people were happy to have conversations and not arguments. Mm -hmm. And now people would rather have the argument. I just don't have time for that. The block button is so much easier. Yes. You know? And yeah. it's not just with people that I disagree with. I like open discourse. And like I said, I, I'll go live with anybody to talk about martial arts. Yeah. But if it's to the point where somebody is just name calling you or they're just screaming or they're just venting and they're mm -hmm. just there to argue, why do I need why do I need that in my life? Yeah. You know, I don't. Block. Move on. Don't give a fuck. A hundred percent. Somebody needs to clip that entire thing and then post that. People need to hear. That's the truth, man. And, like, especially, like, this is streaming right now on Twitch, and then later it's going to be on YouTube. And, like, on Twitch, the community there, there's a lot of really good people. But then there's, like, I don't know if you've been hearing about, like, hate raids and stupid shit like that. But, dude, the block button. It's so much yeah. easier. It's not hard either. And, like, mm -hmm. why do we not block people is because of our ego. Like, yeah. we've allowed the bad guy, the, the person who's arguing with you, mm -hmm. we've allowed that negative influence in our life to dictate our decision at that point. Yeah. If you feel bad about blocking someone because someone's going to say, oh, you blocked me, why? Why? That's not a bad thing. Like, people would like, I, I've had people say, you blocked my friend, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I'll block you too. Like, I don't have yeah. a problem with doing that. I'll block all you motherfuckers. I'll block it. I'll, <laughs> I'll go on a block party. I will get drunk as shit and just go down every one of your friends and your friends list and block all of you. Because fuck you, that's why. Hell yeah. So, like, what people don't understand is, I guess maybe I view the internet in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's like, as I've started to make it my job, you have to kind of set up systems in place mm -hmm. to make your job successful. Successful businesses have systems in place. You don't just guess everything. Yeah. You strategically put things in place a certain way so you can judge and measure and grow mm -hmm. um, and see flaws. And one of those is how do you communicate with people effectively? That yeah. That is not like an easy thing <laughs> online. There are a lot of nuances. It's its own language to understand and read people without ever hearing them. No tonality, no case. Oh, God. No case. Sarcasm you know, is not read in, yeah, you, you know? Don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know what the fuck you mean. Yeah. And so, and we, what we typically do is we typically read comments how we feel. Mm -hmm. So, if like we're mad, we assume that they're mad at us. And so, how we read it is like, you know, well, fuck you. Like, that might not be yeah, how yeah. we're saying. We have to really pay attention to how we communicate. So, mm -hmm. um, what I've noticed is like over the, over the years, the system that I have in place for communication with people online is my social medias are my home. Like my Instagram page is my house. Yeah. My Facebook page is another home. My TikTok page is another home. These are individual houses. And what I'm doing is I'm throwing a party. Mm -hmm. And I've invited anyone who's respectful to come and hang out at this party. And so what I see is I don't see followers. Mm -hmm. You know, I treat it more like a martial arts school. I see students. Yeah. Just coming into my party and we're all hanging out. Now, if someone wouldn't walk up and say some shit to you in person, Mm -hmm. They shouldn't say that shit online. Dude, they yes. They feel like they can get away with it. So, like, I, I put myself in a position of us having a conversation at a party when I read things. Mm -hmm. So, I'm like, I'm at my house party. This person is an invited guest into my home. Mm -hmm. And then they said this shit to me. What would I do in real life? Yeah. If I would kick them out of my house, I'd kick them off my page. Like, Dude, it's yes. that simple. And it's it such doesn't dense. get any harder than that. And how do I communicate with people? Well, I wouldn't say anything online that I wouldn't say to your fucking face. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's just how I operate. Now, not everybody might do that, but for me, it helps me understand communication online better. Like, yeah. How are we talking to each other? Because how I like to see it is, 
we're having a face-to-face -face conversation. And if what you said is offensive enough to make me kick you out of my house, it's offensive enough for me to block you. Yeah. God, that's a great way to look at it, man. Seriously, more people need to social media that way. And I think the world would probably be a better place, or at least online, for sure. Ah, man. Well, thank you for that part. Jeez, seriously. Somebody needs to clip that entire thing, and that just needs to be a headline somewhere. My God, man. For real. That's how people need to deal with haters and, and these uh, trolls. This is how too. I deal with it. Like, I'm not yeah. telling anybody how to deal with their own shit. Like, this is just how I deal with it. <laughs> but I have to, like, I, right now, and I've noticed, like, the more followers you get, the more the more difficult it is to put in the time to yeah. put those little intimate interactions, like be mm -hmm. in your own comment section. And you, you will see these bigger pages who just – they'll get to the point where it does become work, and so they're like, fuck that. No, no, no. Yeah. How I see it is this is my 15-hour-a-day job, mm -hmm. sometimes longer. And during that time, I am obligated to do the thing that I said I was going to do. Yeah. Influence. Yeah. If I'm going to call myself an influencer, you damn sure better influence. And oh, if yeah. you're going to do that, you have to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, some people say don't ever read the comment sections. I don't believe in that. But I don't believe in that because I believe that the majority of people I interact with are good people. Yeah. And they are. It's just the truth. Mm -hmm. Like just because you get like a couple assholes in there doesn't mean that you, it just means you're ignoring the other people who are laughing. Yeah. Stop ignoring people who are laughing and stop paying attention to motherfuckers who aren't. Fuck yeah. Them. Do the thing that makes you happy and interact with people who are also trying to be there for you yeah, and so true. better each other's lives and have these meaningful interactions and you'll just have a better life. I'd have a better life anyway because of it. Hell yeah. So. Yeah. Man. Well, uh, moving on to this really quick, something really funny that I know that you guys have been doing in your, uh, with Instagram recently. Uh, we're actually not even, this is actually could be a very deadly thing actually if we're being honest, but Dale with Dust, have you has anybody been in contact with this guy or like multiple times so just to give you a timeline of uh, detroit dust and dale brown when i was a uh, when i originally did my first post about him mm -hmm. obviously it was the first post i remember doing about him anyway was a photo or a video of what i have now come to know as his stepdaughter or his daughter um, yeah so I might as well just say daughter it's both relevant both the same same thing mm -hmm. Uh, but his daughter um, is like maybe seven, eight years old, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. Um, and there's a gun pointed at her head. The gun is probably about a half a foot away from her. And obviously this is an airsoft gun. Oh, okay, it's, it's like that little clear gun use, thing. Yeah, all of his stuff is airsoft. Okay. So I'm not gonna <laughs> <say that it laughs> but the gun's pointed at the, the little girl's head. And he talks about dodging. And then grabbing the gun, which would never work. No. Um, but he, he, he has videos of himself talking about that as well. Then he talks about stupid shit like the hand's not meant for holding things. No, that's exactly what the hand is designed to do. It's designed to hold things. Yeah, we um, got a thumb. Now, you might be able to leverage and get things out of people's hands. But what, like, the hypocrisy in that statement is <laughs> the hand isn't meant for holding things. So you're going to use your hands, which also aren't meant to hold things, yeah. to disarm the guy out of his hands because his <laughs> hands aren't meant to hold things. Then you're going to take that gun or that knife and put it in your own hand because you're trusting your grip to hold that thing. Yeah. That's the dumbest shit I've ever fucking heard in my life. <laughs> like that, there, that whole statement is hypocritical once you watch him do anything that he does. It doesn't make actual sense. Yeah. And then, you know, but I posted that up and then I was immediately contacted by one of his followers and his mm -hmm. followers was like uh called me which was strange i got oh, a weird. fucking random phone call yeah that's which weird. Was really weird right and so i got the phone call and i talked to the dude and he was like hey would you just like you know take away the post of his daughter and i was mm -hmm. like you know what that's fair well i, I was like you know what? i'm gonna leave it up for 24 hours because i usually make a post a day mm -hmm. i was like i see your point about the daughter thing i don't think that she should necessarily go viral because of her association with her batshit crazy dad. Yeah. Um, or at least I won't even say batshit crazy because I do think business wise, I think he find he understands that he's running a business. Um, I'll say shady, mm -hmm. <laughs> and also I could I can call the guy um, narcissistic because he's been given all these avenues <laughs> of people who are much better than him, much more mm -hmm. experienced. All these people have interacted with him, and rather than taking the time to say, you know what, maybe I don't know better. Maybe I should listen when Ten Kennedy tells me something about handling a firearm and fighting. Yeah. Maybe I should listen yeah. when Henry Gracie says something. Maybe Dude, I yeah, should listen may when, when these four Navy SEALs get on here and tell me that I'm handling a firearm incorrectly. Maybe what I should do is rather than be narcissistic and think I know better, 
is use this as an amazing opportunity, not just to make money, which he's definitely trying to do, mm -hmm. but use this as an opportunity to better me. Let me get those guys in here for a seminar. Let me learn how to do it better. So I don't put out bullshit. I put out yeah. a better product and I can make more money because now I have all these faces. What mm -hmm. if he blocks every one of them? Oh my God. So I did a breakdown video about him, put it on our YouTube channel. The breakdown video has done very well because mm -hmm. now he's, you know, everybody knows him as a, a big fraud. So I've been fighting to make that shit happen for a while. Like he just got called out by Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent. I yesterday. saw that, yeah. Which is great <laughs> because his automatic response on any of his, uh, his comment sections when people leave a bad review is like, this stems from a racist organization. Oh, like, God. It's like, come on now, get the fuck out of here. No, yeah. like, you suck. That yeah. You just suck. Like, you suck as a human. That's all <laughs> there is to it. We'll leave it there. And so on top of that, you know, he's talking about how he does all these good deeds. But, you know, he charges people a dollar a minute to come out to their house to basically walk, wait for them with the police, for the police to show up. Oh, my now, God. I don't think that's a bad thing. But at the same time, do that. Do the security work. Mm -hmm. Don't fucking teach people bullshit. Are you a security company or are you a self-defense company? Yeah. You're a self-defense company, be a self-defense company. Be good at it, though. He, yeah. I think they make a much better security company because when you have a large group of people all dressed in uniforms and look very presentable, mm -hmm. that helps you with security. It does not help you with your day-to-day self-defense shit that he's teaching. No. And so I try to give credit where credit's due with these people. I'm not all or nothing. I'm not like, I hate everything about you. Like, yeah. I, that's not how reality works. But then, you know, now he's getting called out on all these major platforms and stuff like that. But the reason I never took down the video of his daughter working that bullshit gun mm -hmm. self-defense thing was because he, like, after his student contacted me and I mm -hmm. talked with him, so I know they were talking to each other. Yeah. He immediately goes on my YouTube channel and he starts, like, he basically, like, challenges me, which is oh, I'm pretty sure still there. Yeah. And he challenges me to come out to Detroit. Why the <laughs> fuck would I do that? Like, first yeah. of all. If I go to his particular facility, he could sue me for a number of things mm -hmm. if anything goes wrong. It's inside his facility. He could give me the right to not use any of the footage. He can give me the right not to film. He's not a – like I said, I don't think that he's a dumb man. I think that he's a con artist. Yeah. And I think that he's intelligent about the way he's using the internet now because he blocked all comments on his Instagram posts. They're all restricted. Mm -hmm. He deletes any comments that are negative on any of the other posts. He will block anyone who is very persistent about letting other people know about his con. And so he's using it. Now All he has all these numbers. Yeah. But he doesn't care because he's still getting paid offline. Yeah. And so, it, you know, it's a scam. But I, once he did that, I was like, well, well now you're going to be an asshole after I already talked to your guy. I was like, no, fuck that. I'm going to leave yeah. that shit up now because I already made an agreement as a gentleman. But now you're going to sit here and yeah. try to be an asshole after the fact. <laughs> now, nah, fuck you. Well, it so then – he starts talking shit because I told him like when he when he said the thing, which this is all 100 percent true. Yeah, he wanted me to fly out there. And I was like, look, man, it's not a good time for us to meet at all anyway, because mm -hmm. my stepfather had Parkinson's. Oh, yeah. And my stepfather was in the late stages of Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, Alzheimer's. Um, sorry if, if I mess those. No, up, no. But he had, you know, he passed away about two months ago and he had Alzheimer's and he was battling that for a while and it just mm -hmm. become really degenerative and his health went down to crapper and we were preparing for a funeral at the time that he had said all these things. And so, mm -hmm. um, I told him like, wait till this m particular month. I gave him like what the doctor said was the lifeline for my stepfather to pass away. And I said, yeah. let's come back to the table to this around this month. Mm -hmm. And so afterwards, what does he do? Rather than being a grown ass fucking man and sending me a message and saying, Hey man, you know, is now a good time to continue to pursue this. Yeah. He goes on his, his stories and he leaves an Instagram story about how like I hadn't contacted him yet. Oh my God. Like, well, my stepfather hasn't passed away yet. My stepfather is in hospice right now and you're sitting here trying to start this bullshit. Yeah, for like, real. And you knew that shit, right? Okay, okay, okay. Well, fuck you too. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I want you feeling that shit. And I never do this by the way, because I don't believe it's the best way to handle it. But I went on my Instagram and he was going back and forth on his stories. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I made a fucking post. I made a straight up post on my main feed. And I was like, you know what? I challenge you. I, I'm telling you right now, I'll pay for your flight. I'll pay for your hotel. I'll pay for your <laughs> meals. I'll pay for everything for you to come down to Florida and find a neutral facility. We'll find hundred percent neutral and we'll pressure test your stuff that way. Yeah. Yeah. And kept writing in his stories and i was mm -hmm. like why are you writing your stories this is very simple so immediately after that and like an hour later i did it again i said i'll do it one more time i'll double down yeah and i repeated everything and it's still up both of those posts are still <laughs> up now you would assume somebody like this would be like all for it 
Because yeah. if he's really real, why would he? Why would he not? Mm-hmm. You know, like prove me wrong. I, I could be proved wrong, and then I look like a complete ass, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, okay, I was I was incorrect. I will say I'm incorrect if I am. I'll film it and I'll put it out, and I'll mm-hmm. talk about the things I learned, and I'll learn from those mistakes because. I'm not going to lie. My ego ain't like that. Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I, it's not about me. It's not about him. It's about the betterment of the community and all of us coming together to make the arts better. Mm-hmm. His ego ain't doing that. No. And so you would figure he would have called me on that, right? No, he blocked me. You know, <laughs> another cute thing that he did, by the way, which, you know, he was the major players in, in Texas, mm-hmm. like uh, Tim Kennedy and shit, which Tim Kennedy is honestly a really really nice guy because we've had deep conversations about how to call out frauds and he's way nicer than i am <laughs> um, but uh you know he even called them out yeah and then what does he do blocks tim kennedy and then he has the balls Damn. to go and again not make a main post where the world can see yeah it's a story post which was like one one hundredth of the people see yeah i'm in texas whoever wants some come get some like, well, you mean like the person you blocked? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like what? They can't like even you're not see this. Anyone but yeah. your own people, you know. And so, and it always amuses me when I see shit like that. He says his door's always open, but then on top of saying his door's always open for anyone to come in and try it out, you know where I am, all that bullshit. He's constantly blocking people who are all about that life. God, and man. So like, they want to set up a time and schedule shit with you. They don't want to just show up to your facility unannounced because you have that right as a facility owner mm-hmm. without the internet being there to say, nah, no, and you need to leave my property. Yeah. You know, it's so like he, he, he's playing this game as if everyone's really stupid mm-hmm. um, and uh, he's the smartest one. The fact is, is that he does do some good things for his community. Mm-hmm. I am not going to take that away from him. I do think that it is good that he's out there trying to help his community, but at the same time, at the cost of being a fucking bullshit con artist. Yeah. You know, do the security work. Stay away from the self defense shit because you just don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And, you know, like, here, let me show you a cute one, by the way. Can I show you one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, so he has this cute one. By the way, this is completely empty. It's not chambered. Yeah. All right. So, just so anyone knows, it's not a loaded gun. <laughs> and I'm not even going to fucking point it at myself. But he has this thing where the firearm is literally on your chest. Mm-hmm. And he talks about grabbing the slide and taking it out of battery. So the yeah. fire, yeah. by the way, is real. So like, look, cock the gun, right? If I take it out of battery. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Listen to this sound, right? So you ready? Take it out of battery. Listen. Oh, dang. What just happened with that gun? Yeah, freaking hammer. It's still fired. Yeah. Now, here's another here's another issue. Now, some firearms, by the way, do do that. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. There are definitely some firearms. This is your life. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So I want to risk on some. But I'm going to look at it and be like, that's a Glock 19, I think. <laughs> and so the, the firearm is already pointed at your chest. Mm-hmm. So you're already there, guns on your chest. All of a sudden, you think the idea is to push the gun away from you. Yeah. As soon as you grab this gun, what is the very first thing I'm going to do? Yeah, Pull squeeze that, that trigger. <laughs> yeah. So you can push, so you're helping get the gun to where it needs to be so I can still fire it. Mm-hmm. So the logic of what he's saying doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. But he's so confident in the way that he says it, and he's so arrogant in the way that he says it. There's always a little laugh or a little smile or a mm-hmm. little like, ah. Oh, obviously of course you don't know what you're talking about. exactly <laughs> it's like almost like snubbing everybody who, mm-hmm. like look there have been plenty of pressure tests on plenty of gun disarms and things like that that are all over the internet that people could look up the main thing you really need to know is that the gun when it's pointed this way at you is going to fucking kill you yeah when it's not pointed at you that's a good thing but it might kill somebody else mm-hmm. those are the things that you really need to know about a fucking gun yeah. Do I want it pointed at me? What are the risks I'm willing to take? And am I going to try to do some fucking Jackie Chan bullshit where I grab the slide and move it? Now it's out of battery. Like, you don't, that's not going to be in your thought process. Yeah. One of the videos he put out was how to disarm a gun after you've been shot in the chest point blank. What? Yep. Yeah, because I'm going to be thinking about what I saw in this video after I just got shot and I'm freaking yeah. bleeding yeah. out or can't I'm breathe. Shot, so let me <laughs> yeah. go through this process here. What was it that Dustin <laughs> said? <laughs> you know, so, you know I, people like that, you know, I think the, the fact that the narcissism is there mm-hmm. is probably 
things that obviously it makes them want to, you know, fight back. But the people that I've seen that are really good, um, I'm sponsored by a Navy SEAL run company, Kill Cliff. Mm-hmm. The top three guys in the company are SEALs. Are SEALs. Awesome. I don't know how that goes because I'm not. I don't know if once one, always one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and pretend. But all of those guys, you know, I go to them constantly for tactical advice. Mm-hmm. They are the tip of the fucking spear guys. And so yeah. I want to know. You know, I've been fortunate to have all kinds of other people that I've been able to reach out to for advice and to really understand shit I don't know. Mm-hmm. But that's the only way that I could do this job is to constantly say I don't know. Like yeah. the moment I start saying I know everything about everything is the moment that all of this will fucking fail because then my ego is taken over. You have to be in a constant state of I don't fucking know. Yeah. Like all the time. Like what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens? And if you have an answer for 30 or 40 fucking what ifs and you never once said I don't know, you need to start putting your ego in check. Dude, there's yes. definitely some shit in there that you don't fucking know. And that's okay to say, you know what? I don't know, but you know who does? I'm going to contact him and ask, Mm -hmm. come back to you. And then so-and-so says it. And now I've gotten smarter because I've learned from someone who knows better than me. The moment you start thinking, you know, everything about fucking everything is the moment that you will fucking fail at life. A hundred percent, man. I literally, I tell my daughter that all the time. Like she's one of those, like, no, I didn't like always, always knows everything. I'm like really trying to instill that exact concept into her. Like she's nine now. So Hopefully, hopefully she'll get it. Yeah, man. And, then, you know, like we're, and it's okay. Like, people make it sound like such a bad thing to say, I don't know. Like, yeah. Good. Like, good you don't know. That means mm-hmm. you're not an arrogant fuck. Like, <laughs> you said the magic words of anyone who has, like, any humbleness in them ever. Which yeah. Is, oh, gonna, I'll find out, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good thing to hear people say, though, man. I swear, uh-huh. like, just, God. Well, man, we actually, I know, I don't know, you know, like how much time you actually have, but I do have a couple of quick fan questions that we've had here I'm in, today. I'm in no rush, brother. I'm in Heck no rush. yes, dude. Um, So first of all, the fantasy beef, do you have one that you have not been able to necessarily air, but you would really like to see a fantasy beef? Oh, are, of? You, are you talking about the, uh, the, the beef of the week that I do? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, uh, I have one coming up that I'm really looking forward to. Um, which is uh, uh, Jesse from Mexican Martial Arts, mm-hmm. um, who is, you know, he's another influencer in the sphere. Um, but we always have such a good time when we're together. Yeah. We like these Kung Fu theaters, which were like Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of <laughs> shows where we just like crack jokes at shitty Kung Fu movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and so anytime we work together, that's always like my favorite collaboration is to work with him and his guys. Yeah. Um, and the production team, ironically enough, how much I like working with them, the production <laughs> team that he used originally is the same production team we used for making the movie. Oh, nice. And so I was just really, we got close with those guys. So I'm looking forward to that. That's actually this Friday. Um, and then, uh, you know, one thing that was just cool that mm-hmm. happened on the show is like I've had two announcements done on the show. One, Dave LeDuc was on the show last week and he talked to, he talked a lot about his issue with bull cow and like the fight and all that stuff. He talk, mm-hmm. told me a lot of shit that I just didn't know, which is cool. Yeah. Um, but then Roxy, um, Ro- uh, Roxy, Dude, she's so series, cool. Yeah. yeah. She's cool as fuck, but she announced that she was going to retire after her next fight on our last uh, show. Yeah. Which, and, like she just announced it right there. She was like, yeah, I haven't told anybody else yet, but this is, that's going to be the last putting fight. The gloves down, man. And, and then she actually is going to be t- just as, a uh, big ups to her, by the way. Mm-hmm. She's actually her next fight will be a women's MMA record. She will have the most women's MMA fights ever. Really, and hit oh my God, she's I, I think she flies under the radar for some people, but she is a badass. And oh yeah, she's she's legit. You know, just because somebody's like you know likes dressing up in cosplay or yeah. like fucking Star Trek or superheroes doesn't mean they can't put a wholesale ass whooping on you. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just, the, that's something that they enjoy outside of whooping your ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, man, I don't know. I, I'm stoked for that next fight. And I think, like, she got a lot more recognition, I guess, after she, like, you know, wore, like, the Saiyan hair. Everybody's like, oh, my God. But, like, yeah, you if you've been your sleeping ninja, on her. Like, I, I also, like, like, Angie Hill is dope as fuck. Like, Angie Hill's probably, like, another one of those cool people. Like, she's, you know, obviously she's moved up, and she's mm-hmm. looking to try to do more, like, the back scenes, behind the stage stuff. She's setting herself up for success. Yeah. So she's still an active fighter. She's still a fucking animal. You know, she goes out there. She's got a great personality. She's funny. She does the cosplay shit, too. 
You know, and yeah. so that might be a person that a lot of people weren't paying attention to, but that's probably going to be a personality in MMA for a really long time. Yeah, yeah. I think that's awesome, and especially being able to see that, like, from, like, now, and then you'll be able to see her grow in, in MMA. It's going to be yeah, pretty. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, man, um, all right, fan questions. So first one, and I think this is a really important one, how can you spot a fake as far as a, you go into a class? How do you? How would you be able to spot that fake? All right, well, I'll start with just the five rules. So we have five rules of the page and they're very simple. All right, the first rule, no pedophiles. <laughs> yes. It's a... you, would, you would think that that's like, oh my God, that's like obvious. It's yeah. not that obvious because there are, uh, there, every other week or so, there's a mm -hmm. martial arts instructor who is either arrested or put in jail for pedophilia. God, that is so fucked up. So it happens way too often, and I think what people don't do is they don't do enough research on the, their end mm -hmm. to research their instructor individually. People pay attention to shit that's so useless, mm -hmm. like so useless that they they miss the forest for the trees. They don't take the time to do the background research on the individual instructors. Yeah, you don't know what's out there. I think that if you're you're going down that same path of spotting pedophiles, mm -hmm. everyone on staff should be CPR certified, no fucking exceptions. Everybody, there should be a fucking um, uh, a defibrillator on site. Mm -hmm. Don't give a shit what martial art you're doing, and whether it's cardio, kickboxing, they should have a fucking defib unit there. I've seen it save people's lives. Yeah. Um, there's actually a video online of a martial arts guy, a student having a heart attack during a sparring session, and because they had a defib unit oh there, God. he saved his life. That's awesome. So it seems like such a small thing, but CPR certified, first aid certified, defibrillator, um, and also everyone on staff should have a background check done. And it should be re-upped every year locally and federally. Yeah. Um, if, you, if any of those things are missing, you should ask the instructors why. Like, why don't you have backgrounds on your people? Yeah. Like, and those those things should be readily available for anyone to be able to see. Like, you should know if, like, obviously, if the person's like a pickpocket or whatever, that's different. Like, mm -hmm. if they fucked up and they had a rough life, I get it. Yeah. But if they were a pedophile and you have them around children, yeah. there's something fucking wrong with you. Yes, you know? 100%. Like, that's a red flag. Um, the next one is no-touch knockouts, uh, which is obviously funny, but mislabeling technique. If you're at a martial arts studio and they're constantly like, let's say, again, the uh, the cardio kickboxing class, mm -hmm. you're there for the cardio kickboxing class and the guy's constantly talking to you about, all right, this is going to help you with self-defense. Then you're not sparring and you're not hitting mitts. Yeah. You're never actually applying this with another human being, but you're just hitting a bag. It's not self-defense. Mm -hmm. It's going to help your cardio. It's going to help your technique. Not a self-defense class. You have to have resistance. You have to have working with another person who's trying to hit you. You have to have these abilities to have these adrenaline dumps here and there. You have to yeah. have these sticky moments where there's a price to pay for making a mistake. All that is important, and so it should be paid attention to. Lying about your belt rank and fight record is the third one. If you lie about your belt rank or fight record, chances are good you'll lie about absolutely anything. Yeah. Again, this is something that you could research before you ever even walk into class. Frank Dukes, for instance, has been lying about the underground Kumite forever. <laughs> there are videos upon videos upon videos, evidence upon evidence upon evidence of him being a habitual liar. It would not take very long for you to go online and go, Frank Dukes, is it, did blood sport really happen? Oh, it's a lie. Shit. <laughs> um, you know, it might hurt your feelings and ruin blood sport for you, but guess what? It's still going to mm -hmm. give you the truth. Um, unsafe training practices, which, by the way, this is a feeling that you should have. Mm -hmm. If you walk into a martial arts studio and you feel like it's unsafe, just leave. You don't owe anyone an explanation. You don't have to talk to absolutely anybody about that shit. If you like the facility that you're at, you like the people that you're with, and you've been there for a while and you're noticing a pattern of unsafe behavior over a long period of time, mm -hmm. first thing you should do is consult the coach. Hey, I got to let you know, man, this makes me uncomfortable. This is why. Yeah. You know, I don't agree with this. And any good coach worth their weight – can give you a substitute thing to do. A substitute exercise, a substitute drill, a substitute sparring partner. They could substitute anything if you're worth your weight at all as a coach. You can make your student comfortable with what you're about to teach them. Yeah. Then if you don't get a reaction out of the coach and things don't get fixed, then you contact the owner and you let them know, I'm sorry, but if these things don't get fixed, I have to leave. Mm -hmm. And then if they don't, you know where the door is. Yeah. You know, deuces, I'm out. And then you can go to a facility where you feel safer. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, the last one is shady business practices. So 
shady business practices uh the first one that i ever saw was when i was like a teenager and we had a local martial arts gym down here called five star martial arts and five star <laughs> martial arts had an instructor there who literally strong armed people for their money oh he, if the money if his payment was not done on time he would actually go to their houses and threaten them with violence if they did not give him Damn. the money that's a shady business practice it's yeah a martial arts facility and they're charging you these extra fees you were not expected to char to pay. Mm -hmm. You should leave. That was not a part of our deal. You did not explain that. If you're signing any contract, you need to fucking read it. Um, I would also, just me personally, if you're a school owner, my suggestion is if you want to keep more students in your facility, you should give them an opportunity to keep their same price for life because mm -hmm. inflation will happen. Give them the same price for life if they renew 30 days ahead of time. So like, hey, your contract expires in 30 days. If you renew before your contract expires, your price will never change. That's awesome. One, yeah. you'll keep better retention. But two, people are aware that that's there. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the contracts. If you want to keep your students around, and this might sound weird, but it is true, make sure you have good clauses mm -hmm. as to how people can get out. If a student that's is injured true. and they can no longer practice, you should have the ability to get out. If that's not mm -hmm. your contract, don't fucking sign it. Yeah, so you're in a sport where you could be injured and how ironic would it be that you get injured in the facility? You can't go to the facility anymore mm -hmm. because of a torn ACL. Anything could happen, right? You're out. You're never able to do it again, but you still have to pay them for a year. God, yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, it's rough. Um, that's shady. There mm -hmm. should be some or if you're on deployment, you know, mm -hmm. if you're in the military, there should be some clause that says, OK, when you deploy, you're not going to have to worry about paying the full price. Maybe there's a retainer fee like maybe there's like, OK, well. 10 bucks a month to keep you going and then mm -hmm. we'll just extend your contract till you get back shit like that or maybe yeah. you just can't we'll stop it until but mm -hmm. just be honest like if you're a good businessman like stopping all contracts for deployments and stuff is a nice thing to do but you should probably still keep a little bit of that yeah because you're not you don't know when that's going to happen so yeah should your lights get turned on anyway but there's you know at the end of the day being open and honest with your your customer if you're a consumer and you're going and you're trying to, to purchase the service from a mm -hmm. martial arts instructor, do your research, make sure that you are comfortable and make sure that it's safe. Yeah. They start lying to you. They start charging you out of the blue. They start doing shady things financially to you. They start getting into a position where you're just not comfortable mm -hmm. for any reason you should leave. Also last one. All right. <laughs> and this is, this is the unsafe training practices and cult like behavior, which those go together. If a martial arts facility will not allow you to go train at another martial arts facility, mm -hmm. leave immediately. No questions asked. No question. There is no reason that a school owner should have that much control out of your personal life. Yeah. The first thing a cult will really try to do is isolate you. Mm -hmm. That's what any cult will do. This is your home. This is your family. This is your friends. This is where you spend your time. Well, what happens when that goes away? You're left yeah. with nothing? Mm -hmm. No. If you're a student, you should have the right to go anywhere, and a good instructor will tell you, go, dude, go take that seminar over there. And when you come back, do me a favor, show me some shit. Yeah, I yeah. Want to learn, you know, like that's a good instructor. One that's stifling you and telling you no, no, no all the time, that's a cult leader because oh, that's, that's so not true. for you. That doesn't help you. That helps their ego. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people didn't know that last one, man. That's a really good way to look at it. I know even in, like I said, doing a lot of the commentary with the amateur fights and stuff, you see a lot of people that are like, I bleed my gym. I'll never go to another and stuff. And it doesn't make sense. Like they don't get as well-rounded of a teaching. If it. that's the individual's choice, that's mm -hmm. okay. If they're indoctrinated into a behavior pattern like the Bloods and the Crips. Yeah, yeah. Interact with you <laughs> you're just simply the other guy. Yeah. Why? Well, mm -hmm. because you're the other guy. Yeah. But why can't I do it? Well, there's no real reason other than we just don't like them. It's like, well, mm -hmm. that's your ego. Somewhere along the line, two assholes decided that they were going to form an army and those armies are going to go against each other. Yeah. Wouldn't the yeah. world be so much better if the two assholves just fought instead <laughs> of everybody else? <laughs> For real. A hundred percent. Well, another fan question here is if you had one, uh, which I'm not assuming that you do, but uh, your favorite fake martial arts that you've came across. Oh. Oh, dude, I got some great ones. <laughs> I think my favorite one right now is Kyushu Jitsu, K-Y-U-S-H-O. So Kyushu Jitsu, and it's a complete nonsensical martial art. It's so much not a martial art that even the people who train it don't call it a martial art. They, saw, they call it a supplementary martial art. 
So they say it will help improve your martial art. Yeah. And yet they say this, but they still will give you a black belt in it. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, why are you giving nice. out belts then? Like, yeah. If it's not a martial art on its own, well, can I learn just this martial art by itself? Well, yeah, you can. Like, then it's not supplementary. <laughs> anything. You're just yeah. saying that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they're the people who believe in the no-touch knockout shit. Those are the mm-hmm. George Dillmans, the Evan Pantazis, the Chris Thomases. They believe, like, because of acupuncture saying that if you hit these specific spots that it will heal you, Mm -hmm. and if you just hit them differently in a different order, that you will hurt the person instead. Oh, God. It's complete non-made-up bullshit. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when we interviewed some of these people, most of them, by the way, for our documentary, Mm -hmm. I'm amazed they agreed, um, we (laughs) asked them all the same question. And the question was very simple for their art. Are you a licensed acupuncturist? Mm-hmm. And they all universally said no. Why did they say no? Well, don't you think that if you were a master in an art that revolves around acupuncture, that you would have taken the time yeah. to go get licensed as an acupuncturist? <laughs> but none of them have. They are just making it up. And they yeah. make up the pseudoscience bullshit to fit their narrative. And it constantly changes with whoever they're God. talking to. The reason it doesn't work changes though how they teach it to people changes it's it's complete garbage <laughs> but that's like the that's like the most i respect it in one point where they were able to con so many thousands of people it's incredible how good they are at being a con man yeah so I, can, I can respect that they built their craft but their craft wasn't martial arts <laughs> it was talking to people in the shit that's stupid yeah so let me wave my hand and you fall over all right we'll do that to me well i can't you're all you're a non-believing uh, if you lift your, your big toe and you put the other toe down at the same time and you push the, the tongue into the roof of your na- mouth, it neg- neg- negates it. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that's your science, motherfucker? Yeah. You made that sh- I can hear you making it up as you said it. <laughs> By yeah. the way, that is a direct quote from George Dillman. Oh, my God. I have so many people, anytime I ever send them like a video of yours, uh, they'll be like, is this real? Do these people really believe this? And I'm like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Here's how you know on my page. I don't. Some people might not spot this or not. If there is a logo that says mm-hmm. McDojo Life on the post, mm-hmm. they believe. Damn. All right. There you go. Well, that's if a good you insight. Go to the page. Just go and you'll notice there are yeah. some posts that just don't have it. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's kind of there are some posts that do. Yeah. Now, like the ones that are clearly, clearly comedy skits. Yeah. That no one can follow. Like we did one for like <laughs> Black Belt Cologne. Mm-hmm. right that's obviously an ad like it's not a real art right so yeah like, i put the logo on there just because like i thought that shit was funny and i knew that shit would go viral but like yeah. most of the time if you're like curious just look to see if there's a symbol if there is you'll be like just look on my youtube and mm-hmm. there'll probably be a breakdown video about it do there you go nice well hey speaking of which uh master kin how was that fight with him and are you still recovering right now i know you did a <laughs> tiny map fight my groin will never recover uh, <laughs> master kin's probably like He's probably one of the, the cool cooler people to hang out with, too. Like, he's just a good dude. He seems his, awesome. Uh, yeah, his homie, who never speaks in the, the videos <laughs> or whatever, like, when they get together, they're, like, buddies. They're, like, buddy buddies. And so yeah. they're really funny together. They have really good energy. Um, you know, I wish it – I kind of wish that character did speak because I think that that individual is really funny. Um, you know, but, like, he's a cool dude, man. I like, I like working with him as much as I can when I can just because – he was like one of the first people to reach out to me mm-hmm. to work with me after I got like a, a shout out on Rogan. He like oh, immediately cool. was like, Hey man, congratulations, man. That's awesome. And like, I work with other people over time, but like anytime <laughs> I I'm in that area, I'm like, Hey, mm-hmm. do you want to like get some work in? He always says yes. Dude, that's awesome. That's very cool. He seems like a genuinely awesome person and hilarious guy, dude. His videos are so funny. Yeah, man. And I love seeing his success too, man. Like he just, He's just like he really does a good job with the character and seeing him in like movies mm-hmm. like Paper Tigers. I think he was in yeah. Odd Thomas and stuff like that. So he has like movie roles, mm-hmm. and it's cool to see like all this work that he's putting in get recognized to give him a bigger stage. Yeah, yeah. I think he deserves. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. Well, uh, speaking of your documentary, so I know it's been something that's kind of been in the works or at least talked about now for a good while, but it is. From what I saw in one of your last uh, videos, it's actually like finished now. Like it's wrapped up. Have y'all completely yeah, finished, finished shooting? We finished filming uh, January, February, March. So nice. we, we filmed for those three months. Um, and then because this is our first time, we were like, well, what's the best direction to go? Mm-hmm. So we were like, well, let's just edit the movie. And so we started 
doing the editing process, which is a fucking nightmare for how much. <laughs> like one of our one of our interviews alone was sixteen hours. Oh my god! Wow. And that was just one interview, but that guy wow. had written a book and he had yeah. so many things that we didn't know what, how we were going to use and what we were going to mm. use out of the the story. Um, but man, his his story is crazy. He was in a martial arts cult, and he actually just wrote Tom DeBlass's book, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh um, damn! So which is really cool, but you know now that we were like going down the path we were like well maybe we don't need to finish the movie because we kind of want to do a docu-series yeah yeah like how we edit a, a movie and how we edit the docu-series would be night and day totally different. different yeah and so we started editing and then we second guessed it we were like well let's just pitch it and see if someone would be willing to back it and then mm -hmm. we can get more things at our disposal to make it even better yeah and so now we're at the pit the, we made the trailer um we made which by the way anybody at all who has donated anything whatsoever yeah. if they bought a shirt if they ever sent like a, a a penny donation, any a dime to help anything, they get access to the McDojo Life DOC page on Instagram. So it's McDojo Life DOC, mm -hmm. and uh, just show proof that you have paid for absolutely anything or sent a donation in, mm -hmm. and you get in there. All That's the behind awesome. the scenes footage is in there, the trailers in there, and any updates as we get them go in there. Mm -hmm. um, which I'll have probably another update this afternoon. Dude, nice. <laughs> so there you go. Afternoon, yeah, I have a meeting at two with one of our guys, but a new guy we brought in, so I'll introduce mm -hmm. him to the page and stuff. But it's a long process when you are new to it. Yeah, and like you don't like. I, I have a lot of people who are like, "Yeah, I love this idea. That's great." And it's like, "Cool, will you help me get a connection to talk to somebody?" And then like, <laughs> it's like, real quiet. <laughs> yeah, they're and like, "Yeah, oh, better not." Because they, I get it. You know, it took me a while to figure it out why it's like such a people business in Hollywood is because mm -hmm. your first flop could be your last job. Yeah, that's true. So, like, if you fuck up and you vouched for somebody and said, dude, this is going to be a hit, and it tanks, mm -hmm. your career is going with it. Yeah. So, most guys took so long and worked so hard to get where they are that they want to see proof. They got to yeah. see that you could do this. And so, it's difficult to go straight there with it. But yeah. That's what we're doing. It's cool that it's so grassroots, too, man. I mean, I know this has been something that you've been working on for a while. And, like, if y'all do have future projects past this, I'm sure they're going to end up coming to fruition a lot sooner since now, you you know, like you said, proving yourself and proving that it can happen. But it's awesome yeah, to see like right I, now. I try to stick to my word, man. Like, you know, when it comes down to – to what I'm doing, basically I just call out frauds. And so like if I tell somebody I'm gonna do something and then I turn around and don't do it, that kind of defeats the purpose yeah. of what I'm doing. The only yeah. thing that does suck is like the only people that give you a hard time, the only people that give you a hard time are people who didn't do shit for you. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Like all the people who actually like donated and like bought a shirt or like follow your stuff or hit the subscribe button or like interact positively, those people are fucking down. Like yeah. those are what make you. Like, so you damn sure better talk to them. You damn Hell sure yeah, better man. show them respect. <laughs> I tell everyone, everyone, and every one of my fucking messages, don't give a shit who they are, don't care if we've talked before, mm -hmm. and I appreciate them. Because yeah. I fucking do. <laughs> I do. Like, what? who am I without them? I'm, I'm just some fucking dude. But dude. they make it. This isn't about me. I'm just a dude. I'm. Trust me, the first four years, I didn't put my fucking head on this damn thing until mm -hmm. I realized I kind of had to to grow the brand. But... <laughs> When it comes down to it, it's not about me. It's about those individuals that give a fuck enough to speak out, to be ready, to basically be like the white blood cells who start attacking the viruses. Yeah. Now, the community has to do this, not mm -hmm. me. One guy ain't going to do shit. But if you can rally a group behind you that is behind a good cause, man, they'll they'll change the fucking world. Yeah. And that's really the goal here is you see these fucking shysters. And, yeah, if I complained about them, I'm just some one guy online, one asshole, one internet troll is what they call me, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone that I call out calls me a troll. <laughs> it's like, well, if I'm a troll, motherfucker, I'm a professional troll. Yeah. Like, dude, I <laughs> Got I'm the troll army in troll. here, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I troll for life. And if, if it means, like, getting called names or getting death threats or any of that bullshit, fucking worth it. Yeah. Worth every bit of it. Worth oh, yeah, it. man. I love this job. Dude, nice. Well, um. Do you have with the with the documentary? I know. Are y'all pitching it right now? Is it kind of in that process of trying That's to find the, land a yeah, land man, a place? We're, we're in what's called distribution phase. So mm -hmm. distribution phase is where we're trying to find a streaming service or a mm -hmm. company that will be willing to pick it up and help carry it to the next spot. Um, so we're trying to get representation, which is our meeting we have today about trying to get an agency to represent us. Mm -hmm. um, so that way they can get us into those doors quicker. Yeah. Um, it's not impossible without it because there is no one straight way to get things done. Mm -hmm. But 
we're trying and so that'll be cool also we're obviously you going through our contacts and trying to see what who would help and stuff like that everybody's like just contact rogan man we'll get done in a second <laughs> not, first of all first of all he's done a lot for me without asking shit yeah like, i'm not gonna sit here and lie i did ask to be on the show like twice and then i left <laughs> that shit alone yeah hell I'm, yeah i'm never gonna fucking ask again why because there i think there should be a separation and some fucking respect in other people's mm-hmm. lives and just because they support the thing that you do doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to let you go all the way to the gates and yeah. use them as the way to do it. A hundred percent. These people aren't your blockers in life. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to run the fucking ball down the field on your own. Mm-hmm. And then once you get your touchdown, then you will earn their respect. And so I think what happens is, is like right now I'm in this position where there's a lot of people who have eyeballs on it and they see the caliber of people who follow the page. Mm-hmm. And they're like, why don't you just contact The Rock? He'd do it. Doesn't fucking work <laughs> that way. You yeah, don't, like you don't just interact with people because you want things from them. Mm-hmm. That's a shitty way of being a fucking human being. Yeah, it's very so, true. Like, that, you know, like I want to do this shit on my own. I want to stand on my own fucking legs and I want to earn my own seat at the table. Yeah. I don't want to have to be like, well, Steve said it's OK. I could sit here and then sit there and not feel like I earned it. Yeah. You know, I want to earn it on my own. So now we're like, you know, it might take longer that way. But at the end of the day, now I know the process. Mm -hmm. Now I can have the contacts. Now I could be that guy and I can grow my own shit. Yeah. So I I, I fucking love it, man. And eventually, who knows what will happen with it. But with distribution phase, it's the hardest part because you have to have somebody to listen to your project Mm -hmm. who sees the value in it and is willing to put their balls on the line Mm -hmm. or vagina. (laughs) <laughs> to uh you know to vouch for you even if all you have is an idea mm-hmm. and that's when you're talking about someone's career it ain't just as easy as going hey i got this idea <laughs> man that's fucking great let's go let's it does do it. not work that yeah way, yeah you know? mm-hmm. so you gotta polish polish the motherfucking bowling ball before you throw it down the lane so hell yeah man we're working on it so if you had an ideal place to have this streaming where would you have it at or just have 100% it 100 netflix 100 percent. nice hundred yeah. like I, there was no question. Like mm-hmm. the only only two places that I even like, well, three. Like obviously, if we get like a, a Hulu or whatever, that's still cool. But no one's gonna fucking watch that shit on there. They'll watch it on Netflix because Netflix has fantastic documentaries. Every yes, a hundred percent. Really good documentary series I've seen was yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. Um, and we're we're talking a lot about cults and stuff like that inside this documentary. So we really hope that that angle will draw in people who might not necessarily watch it if it was just about martial arts. Mm-hmm. Um. And then uh, on top of that, if we couldn't get that, HBO Max is probably like my other one. They're that really, I really good too, like yeah. Because I just like the fucking app. Yeah. Like, I HBO Max is pretty fucking good, but those are the two we're looking at. And obviously, we have backup plan and backup plan. And at, at the end of the day, I could always just distribute it on my own. Yeah. Um, I, the only thing I don't want to do about I don't want to do that for is because if I put it up on YouTube, I won't be able to make the movie I want to make. Mm-hmm. Because I have to mind all their little fucking rules. Oh god! If I, you know, yeah. if I don't say it a certain way, or if somebody mentions something that they didn't like that day, mm-hmm. it's I it I get five wide. minute videos that get demonetized. Yeah, think yeah. I'm gonna get like a five part <laughs> series not demonetized. <laughs> For real. So, do you it's find not, it's not as easy? Yeah. Do you find yourself in like kind of a really unique position where it's between like very seriousness, like some of these, uh, like a lot of the stuff that you're covering is a very serious thing. Like obviously you're talking about like, uh, like leaders that have been like molesters and freaking people can actually die if they try to do these techniques in real life. You've got this serious aspect and then a very humorous and aspect as well too. And you're like almost kind of riding that line. You find like that's a hard balance to obtain. I'm, it depends on the situation. Like sometimes I just don't joke about certain shit. Like I don't joke mm-hmm. about pedophiles. Like if no, you watch no. any of my my news stories and stuff, like there is no joke to say. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I just get straight up pissed off, but that's just how I feel, mm-hmm. you know. And so like, but, like this isn't a persona. Like, yeah. This is, a, this is just just me. Like mm-hmm. I, there just happens to be a camera recording me. Like I, <laughs> what I would hate is to be someone different, to have to change out of characters, which was an option by the way. Like I yeah. talked to a lot of people before showing my face on youtube and on the interwebs Mm -hmm. as the guy who runs the page and you know there was a lot of thought and processing that went into that i talked to master ken about how he does his thing yeah matt 
and Master Ken are not the same person. Mm -hmm. And they don't even act the same at all. <laughs> he is not that dude whatsoever. Nice. You know, um, you know the, my homie Jesse from Mexican Martial Arts. Mm -hmm. He's not Vincent. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're different people. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, and I didn't want to do that because that always sounded so exhausting to me. Yeah. You always have to be constantly like, am I in character or am I not? Would mm -hmm. my character do this? I don't want to do that bullshit. Like, yeah. This is just me. Um, you know, but it, it could be it could be tricky. But at the end of the day, you just do the best that you can. You hope people like it. And yeah. That's all you can really do. And honestly, too, like I feel like that style of like just being genuine, I think that has long – like better longevity, you know. I think you've got a better shelf life if that makes sense. Like people kind of grasp on to like the uh, genuine in your your personality, and they can actually form a real connection with it beyond just like the, you know, if it was just for laughs and stuff like that. They just like, oh, that was funny. Next, next yeah, funny like, thing. And people people give me like hard times over shit that I don't even think they should give me a hard time. Like I'll say something that I'll be like, ah, <laughs> you might be towing the line with that. And then, like, I'll expect to get people give me a hard time about that. And they'll be like, oh, my God, that's so funny. <laughs> and then I'll, like, I have this bit that I do because mm -hmm. I hate con men. I hate mm -hmm. frauds with a fucking passion. <laughs> and so I purposely fuck up their names all the time. And I do it to everybody. <laughs> nice. But then, like, people's, like, racism in their own head, they, like, look for reasons to find yeah. fault in what you did. They're like, why did you have to fuck up that guy's name? Is because he's from a foreign country? It's, no, because he's a fucking fraud. <laughs> like, fuck it. Like, dude molested a kid, and you're worried about yeah, his name? Yeah, pronunciation fuck of his, his name. name. Yeah, for real. Fuck his name, man. Fuck him. Fuck his name, his mom. <laughs> whole, anyone who supports that dude, they can all kiss my ass. Hell yeah. So, like, I'll fuck up their names, too. Like, it's not it's not like that. Like, I'm, <laughs> I have a specific job. You call it, and they're like, I don't take it as seriously because you joke around. Then don't take it seriously. I'm not here to amuse you. Yeah. Like if you if you find it funny, cool. I tell all of my jokes. I learned this from a close friend back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, but I tell all my jokes for my own amusement, so I'm never disappointed. Oh, there you like, go. Yeah. You, know, you don't laugh. That's cool. I didn't tell that joke for you. I told it for me. I thought that shit was hilarious. I laughed every time. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Ah, dude, well, I like that personality style, and I like I I don't know. I try to tell that to people all the time. I think people can like sense bullshit. A lot of the times, you know, and then even if you do have like a small surge of like uh, viewership or something like that, and it's just the fakeness, I think people can eventually see through it. And especially like doing podcasts, you're doing so much, you're putting out so much content that it would be nearly impossible to keep up a facade that long, you know, or at least like, I'd I, like to hope that so. That shit sounds fucking exhausting to me. I don't, <laughs> yeah. A hard pass on that. I, I'll just say what I feel like saying and I'll mm -hmm. do what I feel like doing. And if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't. And that's okay. Hell yeah, man. I like it. Well, brother, so you guys have the documentary coming out, uh, and then on your YouTube uh, with the uh, fantasy beefs that y'all do, um, when is the next one coming out? I think you said you were doing another one um, very soon. Friday. 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 So, so Friday. Yeah, so. We, we usually film on Thursdays, and mm -hmm. I usually get the footage back, and then I try to post them on Fridays. Um, mm -hmm. If I don't on, on Friday, I'll post on Saturday. Um, but I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I had a show, which – and what was really fucking crazy is me when I first started my YouTube, I had no clue what I had no clue. I don't, still don't have a clue what I'm doing. I'm, just doing <laughs> I'm fucking up my way forward. Is what's um, I'm, I'm like I'm falling upstairs. Is what's going nice. on. But what you know when I'm when I'm on like doing the thing, I, I try to research and I try to listen to other people who are really successful and doing a good job at what they mm -hmm. do. And some people have one platform that they're so huge on, and the other one they not as huge. Yeah, yeah. Like, they figured out this formula that I didn't. So let's see what they did over here that's good. Mm -hmm. And I'll give them some of the shit that I did on this platform to help them grow that way. Yeah. And, you know, uh, when I first started YouTube, I had, like, these amazing guests. Yeah. Like, I really, like if you really go back <clears throat> to the very first videos that I did, all I didn't know how to make content or what my niche was going to be or how I was going to present any of this to the world. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a fucking clue. And so I was like, I'll just interview people. Interviews are easy. We'll just shoot the shit. And so I started doing that. And I had all of these, like, crazy – I had, like um, – man, it's, it's hard to explain how many fucking great guests we had. Like, right off the hey. bat, like, one of my first guests was, like, um, fucking uh, Kenny Florian. Kenny Florian mm -hmm. was, like, one of my first guests, like, right off the Hell bat. Yeah. The dude's, like, a fucking <laughs> legend, you know? Like, I, I didn't have a clue how to interview people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, all that all that stuff I was doing was tanking. Like, if you go back and watch, like, some of those interviews don't even have, like, 300 views. Yeah, and they were like big name people, and I had like a system <laughs> I thought would work. Yeah, but the 
for this is like people don't come to your page because of the other people. Mm -hmm. People come to your page because of you. And I didn't know that. I thought like, oh, well, people will like this guest. Mm -hmm. So let me like get this guest and then people will come because of that. Yeah. Yeah, That's that's not what keeps a nightclub open. No, exactly. People don't come to the nightclub because of the one event you did. They come to the nightclub over and over and over again because you created something. That's a really good way of looking at it, man. Very good way of looking at it. That shit took fucking forever. (laughs) Like I – I honestly, I don't think I got my first real payment out of YouTube, and I've had it as long as I've had my Facebook. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've had my um, had the first one that got taken down, no but problem. I don't even think I got my first payment on uh, YouTube until like four years ago or some shit. Jeez, they get a, that's <laughs> awesome. And I mean, especially like the people that you had on with your podcast, like you said, I went back and watched some of your older ones. You've had some freaking bangers on there, dude. Like, Dude, I had Dave, Le- Dave LeDuc back in the day. I had uh, Rory McDonald. Yeah. I had, um, who else did I have on? John Hackleman, who's mm. been fucking awesome. And I had all these like legends, and I was like, people are going to love these guys. And yeah. It wasn't about them. Well, I mean, especially now, I'd say like probably it's with with your reach and like your extensive knowledge. Like if you get more people on like that, I think that that would be it would be a lot different now, you know. Yeah, and that's why I'm doing the beef of the week. Like, yeah. I do this like tongue in cheek show where we talk about these hypothetical fights that never fucking happen, like Mario <laughs> versus like Luigi, and like, yeah, who's winning a fight, and you know we get to like have fun with it, and but yeah. at the same time, you know, talk about shit. Like we had a uh, Ashley Yoder on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and when she came on, like we talked for about 30 minutes about like all the uh, the sexual abuse allegations and stuff like that that are coming out of some of the MMA gyms. Mm-hmm. Um, and we talked about that for quite a while. So it was cool that we That's got awesome. to like talk about all these really funny things and take this moment of time to talk about this real major issue for a second yeah. um, without it like bringing the show down. It was just like an yeah. open conversation. Mm-hmm. That's what I like about this forum, man. It just feels more natural. Like you're actually just getting to talk to somebody instead of it just being like, you know, I don't know, like cutting to commercial breaks and stuff like that. It makes it a lot more genuine, I think. But yeah, it's, it's just fun. Like talking to people's cool. Like yeah, the more people you talk to, the more you learn about other people. Mm-hmm. You learn it, you learn so much shit. Like I love. Uh, I don't know if you ever read any of Timothy Ferris's stuff. Mm. Uh, but you know, four hour work week is great, but he came out with uh, tools of Titans and he came out with another book that I don't remember, but the other <laughs> tools of Titans and the other book, maybe it's tools of Titans too. I don't fucking know. Yeah. But all tools of Titans is, is his podcast mm-hmm. dictated and written in a book. Oh, that's cool. Jeez. That's all it is. It's <laughs> like, you know, and it's, it's about very specific subjects. And so you don't read it like a normal book. You go through the table of contents and you like find the subject you want to learn about. Mm-hmm. You open it up to the expert talking about it and you just read. Yeah. Um, but that was all That's he did, awesome. and he wrote a fucking book about it. Jesus. So there was yeah. a lot of value in these open dialogues and conversations because when you have these open conversations, it just goes down a path that mm-hmm. most likely, statistically, probably wasn't gone down before because we're all individuals with our own thoughts and processes. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you too, like just since I've been doing this and like talking to random different people and like I, I think it's helped me outside of just like obviously the podcast world, but it's helped me – in just my daily life like the other day i had a meeting and with like some the owner of this uh building company and a lot of people and it was in a place that i'd normally be fucking terrified because there was like it was an open floor plan desk everywhere and they're like let's meet on the table sat in the middle of this whole table and crushed the interview and like Uh, i don't know i was like that's the first time i think in like a business interview setting where i'm like all right that was pretty damn good we did a good (laughs) job you know so like I don't know. I think it all helps, you know. It, it's all just like a personal growth thing as well, too, you know. Yeah, man, so I think it's, it's cool. These are cool, man. Technology is fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Like it's, you know, it's caught up to my shortcomings. My directions are horrible. My memory is terrible. <laughs> I got punched in the head for a living for a really long time. So I'm just yeah, happy yeah. I know where the hell I am right now. But, you, know, like, you know, you get to connect to a lot of people you wouldn't have connected to. You mm-hmm. get to talk to people you wouldn't have normally gotten to speaking with. And, you know, if you're, I think that if you take the time to, really give yourself the opportunity to talk to different people you're going to learn a lot about yourself and yeah you know again like not, some of the stuff is not new but mm-hmm. some of it is and so you get an opportunity to polish and talk about some of the things and explain yeah. them better mm-hmm. um, and sometimes you get to learn something new about yourself or other people hell yeah man well brother i have taken almost two hours of your time and i appreciate you so much for coming on here man you've been like you're one of the most humble people I've talked to and you have such an awesome following and such an awesome community. I'm like honored to have you here, brother. 
Nah, man. I'm just, I just like the shit and I like talking <laughs> shit. So I appreciate you having me on. Hell yeah. Well, do you have a, do you have anything you'd like to leave our guest with? Yeah, man. I mean, if you guys want to keep up with what's going on with McDojo Life, it's McDojo Life at pretty much any social media there is. Um, the McDojo on Facebook because our original one got removed. Um, it is on Reddit. It's I do believe it's the McDojo Life um, <laughs> on Reddit because some asshole got on Reddit before I was able to cool. and took McDojo Life uh. and they never use it and they never answer their emails. Um, one day I will find this person. Um, they're like, yo, dude, come on. Like, Just let up on it. Buy that. Yeah, but now it's too late. Like my my Reddit's got like fourteen thousand followers on there. It's like that one has like twenty, so I don't even want that shit anymore. So yeah. I can keep it. I hope, I hope you choke on it. Um, but you know, but yeah, like at the end of the day, if you really enjoy martial arts, one don't give a fuck about what I have to say. <laughs> like, let's just be honest. Like, if you enjoy martial arts, don't worry about putting yourself out there for people to see. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're gonna practice, like I put up nunchuck videos, so I don't give a shit if people roast me. I like it. Hell yeah. It doesn't have to be something for everybody else. This is your journey, your experience. If you're at a gym that I have called out and you still want to be at that gym, even though you know all of the dirty, shady things, Mm -hmm. that's on you. You are more than welcome to go that. We all have different journeys, paths, experiences, and goals is the main one. And if you feel like you're at a gym and it's helping you reach your goals and you feel it's not a detriment to you in some way, then just do it. Continue to do it. That's it. Um, don't don't worry about what anybody else has to say about you. You just do you, you know. But yeah. I will promise you this: if you break any of those fucking five rules we talked about, <laughs> I'll be coming at you like it's my full time job. Hell yeah! Um, That's what we love to see about you, man. I mean, you literally you you are like brutally honest, and I don't know in a, in a very in a, in, I'd say in a really kind way as well too, man, because it's very truthful and it comes from a good place. I think so. It's freaking awesome. Well, I appreciate it, man. And I always love talking shop, so I appreciate you having me on. Hell yeah, brother. Well, again, thank you so much for your time and have a blessed rest of your day. Appreciate you, dude. Take care, man. Guys, that was freaking awesome. I don't know. I've been following McDojo Life for a very long time. He is a very cool dude. That was a great, great conversation. I feel like I learned a shitload so seriously this is one of the podcasts i'll be going back and just like re-watching what he said thank you all for freaking hanging out today 